and welcome to another episode of HTR Hard Truths and Reviews. I'm your host tonight, Loomis. OG Mike is still on vacation. Shout out to OG Mike. We're loving all your shorts, buddy. Uh, we're loving that little Caesars pizza tour that you're doing for me. Uh, you and Ghost breaking my balls on that video. I love it. I love it. Keep it up, buddy. And uh, safe travels, Mike. We miss you. And uh, looking forward, though, to your return, buddy. Also, guys, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Um, I think that you guys will like this channel. We just try to, you know, speak nothing but truth. We don't fabricate. We don't say whatever. You know, we might be wrong at times from certain sources, but we always admit our wrongs. And that's what we're all about. Just like when I was on with Marky Mark the other day. And at first when I was like, God, he isn't smart. And then what he just told me, I could admit though when I'm wrong. And it changed my mind. So um, also what we do here too, if anyone's new, is we let any of the viewers on. Anyone who subscribed to the channel and gives a like or whatever is welcome on the channel. As like a guest of the podcast, we do open doors every Sunday and we'll throw them out at different times. So uh, if you ever weren't on a podcast before or a show and you feel like coming on a show or whatever, come on, come on. Uh, we welcome everyone. So uh, let me just get settled here before we get into tonight's topic. And also, again, I know I just have to keep saying it, but listen, guys, you have been amazing. I mean, amazing. This, um, our subscribers have been going up. We're getting like almost 100 a week now. And uh, we are genuinely, genuinely, genuinely grateful for each and every one of you. And that's why this channel, we don't hide comments. We don't do this or that. We accept all comments and we accept everyone. And uh, it, good, bad, or indifferent, we're here. Our only stipulation is if you say anything sexually to our mods, to the ladies, stuff like that, you're gone. And um, personal family type stuff, uh, you're gone. And um, I will be going into the comments after I say my piece. And um, I just want to say, I know I see Ghost up in up in there. What's up, Ghost? I want to thank OG Ruby. I want to thank Roro. Mikey Griggs, I see you. And Dave from Boston Labor's Union, my man. Boston in the house. Always love it. Favorite city. Um, Pete, how you doing, brother? Great seeing you here. And Frankie, what's up, Bob Kings and its infamous rats? What's going on? All right, guys, I got a story for you first. I don't know if you just remember, though, when I used to go out to, um, I have a real good friend out in Springfield, Mass, named Giuseppe D'Arco. And uh, I'd go out there and visit with him. He'd take me to Buckeye's, uh, Bucks, I mean, uh, I think it's Buckeye Cigars to the Smoke Shop, if you guys were following for a while. Great guy. Uh, just a real solid, solid guy. And um, Giuseppe, if you're watching, I love you, my man. I know you've been busy. Same here, but uh, I will be back in contact with you. So the channel and the person I'm talking about right now, uh, you know, you got to be careful because they they hate rats, right? But yet they'll try to strike everyone's channel and send cease and exist and this and that. Well, I'm the wrong one because I don't care. <laughs> so go out, do what you got to do. Um, but stop preaching all the rat stuff when you're doing it yourself. And the reason for this is, and it's funny, it doesn't have to do with anything with Mr. Molino and all that. I know that's blowing up, though, and going on right now. But it just happens, though, that this is actually going on, though, with us from these same guys. The person's name, who's not even his real name, I'll just be like, number one, you said on your show that you'll never, ever, right? You'll never have a police officer. You'll never have rats. You'll never have uh, COs. You'll never have any of that. Well, one of your wrenches, though, is a CO. So there, right there, boom. Um, another thing, your thing on Russell Buffalino was just, you know, you get mad though. When you, when you make things up, people are going to call you out. So we take, so I'm going to Springfield, Massachusetts now. This is back to the story to speak, um, to speak, to go with, uh, meet up with Giuseppe. We have a great time. Everything was great. I come back. 
I'm ending up going out there again. And uh, a guy from the neighborhood, he was like, oh, my God, uh, Loomis, I can't believe that you're from around here. Like, are you kidding me? Blah, blah, blah. I played basketball with your brother, this and that. And uh, I had him in my home, my fam, like family, family home, too, for my parents, which I don't do for anyone, right? I do it for people like Ghost would be a welcome in. Mike would be welcome in. If, if you know, I'm talking though, like you know, your actual family childhood home. You know, it's just it's different than uh, whatever. So usually, I'll you know, for me to do that, I have to trust you and I have to respect you. But this little story will explain why uh, I'll never do that again. Guy contacts me. We meet up at Moore's, the name of the establishment, Moore's Cafe. It's like the bar. It's our bar in East End. Meets me there. We're having, you know, he's having whatever he's having. I'm having my soda. We're just talking, talking a lot about Russell, talking a lot about that channel. He was telling me how the host of that channel really he was connected big time with the mob and his family's all mob and all that stuff. Okay. And um, all of that type of stuff. So... The reason why I'm not dropping names is because these guys are going to try to like, you know, get this all taken down and I'm not even, this is nothing direct. Everything I'm speaking is just truth. I'm not calling them anything different because I'm mad. Like with me, what's the one that I always hear from everyone? Oh, he's just a junkie or he was just a junkie. Yeah. Keyword was, and I don't care. Yeah. I had my problems with addiction, but now I'm here to let everyone else know you can get the fuck out of it. So that's that. Also, let me turn this off because if you guys watch me, you know that how I'm uh oh Roro, thank you very much for the donation, bro. Appreciate that. I'm sure the link is in the description. Thank you, Ro. And um, if you guys would like to donate to the channel, um, anything helps, but definitely give it a like, give it a subscribe. So I'm you know hanging out with them. We're talking about Buffalino and all that because we're from the same area and, you know, everything's going, uh, everything's going great. I think he's a great guy, you know, great guy. Knew my brother, all that type of stuff. And um, so then he meets me again. Like, you know, this wasn't just like a one-time thing. Meets me again. And he wanted me to try to go out to Boston and get a dinner with John, Red Shea here, right? But John was extremely busy. I don't even, he wasn't even in town. So we went to Springfield, Massachusetts to Giuseppe's house, right? At the time, this is when I first started the channel, guys, when I was just getting my life back. You know, I had nothing. I was doing the channel through the phone. I said, I can't go out there. It's like he wanted to go out there. I said, I can't. I don't have money. He goes, well, I'll throw you $200 though to go out there. I said, sure. Okay, let's go. We go out. We have a great time. Everything's good. But the last night, though, he just left. Left on his own and didn't say why or nothing. He... I then texted him, hey, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. No, I just had to get back home, whatever, la di da 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 Okay, but it's kind of weird. You didn't even tell us. Just, it's me, Giuseppe, and you. He just leaves. So, Joe Town Jack, thank you very much. I got to keep that on just to thank everyone for donation. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, we do work hard on the channel, and as you guys know, we let all of you on the channel. We don't put up, we don't charge or do any of that type of stuff and um even though all of our videos you know that we try to get monetized they don't because of my cursing you know but i'm trying to i'm trying to work on that but i can't i like if i try to be fake a little bit it's just you know, i can't so it is what it is back to the story i i got receipts for it all and everything too i text this guy when i come back hey man i owe you 200 bucks what's going on is everything all right got nothing 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 back from him because, you know, you want to pay him back, right? Nothing. So about a year goes by. It was literally a year. I get a call from a friend of mine, from Frank, and he's like, hey, who's this uh, guy? He's a, he's one of the wrenches for the channel that I'm speaking about. So you guys could take it from there. Who's this guy? Um He's reaching out to me and he wants uh, the paperwork on Carmine Lomadar Lomadarzi or I can't I always screw up the uh, name, but uh, he was a top echelon though and foreman. He was the one that he was around Russ a lot. So, but not that's fine. You do that, but then he brings me up and he's like, 
talking down on me and being like, yeah, yeah, watch, watch what you're, uh, you know, with Loomis though, and this and that, and trying to like get like, you know, stuff from our project. Because on that show, they made something up that Russell's on wire saying that he wishes that he could make Frank Sheeran the boss uh, because, uh, but he can't because he's Italian and all that stuff. Just, you know, some stuff was factual that's just out there, but other stuff was complete nonsense. And guys, listen, I'm not trying to be the know-all or whatever, but when it comes to the Buffalino family, uh, I'm from the same exact area. I talked to the actual family. We are in current works right now on the uh, production of it is what it is, the true story of the Buffalino family. And I talk to them all weekly, daily, whatever. So believe whatever you want on whatever formats, but, and also check out on Instagram, the, bu- the, the Buffalino family, because we're always posting stuff on that page. So give that a check. So I get a call from Frank and he's like, yeah, who is this guy? And like, you know, this and that. And he's kind of like, you know, talking no day. And Frank, he's smart. That's how I knew Frankie has street smarts. He goes, and this is, guys, this is how you know someone doesn't have street smarts. If someone they're supposedly cool with, because he said, yeah, no, I know Loomis, I'm cool with them. But if someone is supposedly cool with a certain person and they say to you, yeah, he's cool, but blah, blah, blah. Right there, you should have on the, the, the red light and being like, well, wait, you're talking about this guy and you're supposed to be cool with them. Why are you talking down on him? You know, he's obviously trying to smear me on this project because he's from here and he's obsessed with the Buffalinos. Obsessed. So uh, he wants the paperwork. He doesn't get the paperwork or none of that type of stuff. And I text him after what was said to... Uh, and I, th- I think even the first text was, I owe you 200 bucks. You were gone forever. I'll show you the text, guys. I, you were gone like for what's going on. And uh, we start talking and I start telling him stuff. And I'm telling him just basic s- stuff that's out there and this or that, you know, let him be cool though about it and tell and saying to him, why did you, because here's what he said. He's like, oh, what happened to the Whitey Bulger project? First off, try ma- anyone out there, try making a, a legitimate documentary film. I'm talking that's going to be out there. You're going to fall on your face at times. That's still on the shelf. But with cost and everything, I'm just explaining it to you. I live right here in Wilkesbury, and I'm friends with the Buffalinos. So it's perfect, right? And that's like a, that's a passion project of mine from my hometown and all that. Be very careful, guys, of untalented, lazy, but motivated people who are just looking for a little ticket. Listen, thumbnails don't do it. Like Ghost was just telling me, you know, once something's actually going to be in the doc, just never throw it out there. And that is, you know, common knowledge in a sense, but usually your watermark stuff, this and that, but they have ways to whatever, uh, to get it. So I'm like, I know they're not trying to do a project. They're probably trying to do like another show and have like the proper paperwork and this and that and going behind my back and, you know, hitting up though Frank and saying this stuff to him and saying bad. To, what did I do? I took you. We, we went out there, you know, and you, it's like he has a mole uh, for his channel. Like he has moles, like, you know, figure this out, figure that out or figure whatever out. The same guy who said that John Travolta's Gotti was better than Goodfellas. So, <laughs> you know. It's all about who he's talking to at that time. It's almost like donors in the presidency. They got to talk good about him, right? They're donors, right? So whoever he's cool with at that time, he'll make up whatever the fuck and just say, yeah, they're the best ever, blah, blah, blah. But then he'll have new relationships though. And then then like, you know, and then not have relationships with her. I don't know about you guys, but if you noticed me, my relationships with everyone are solid and they pretty much always stay. When relationships are always just dropping off and dropping, you know, it's not good. Anyone who's been on this show, anyone who is affiliated with the show, you could ask them about me and when I was out there or any of that. And I guarantee you, they have nothing bad to say about me. You guys know I wear my heart on my sleeve. You guys know that I have nothing to hide. I'm not a gangster. I'm a guy that's from an area that, you know, had right there. That's all I have to say. And I had my issues. So go ahead, try hit me with the the fact that I was an addict or I have a possession charge or a DUI, this and that. I already threw that all out there. Keyword was, just like the guy from Boston who I can't wait to have a talk with 
Remember, he left me that message, you're a hick junkie because you didn't want to just admit the truth and trying to hide what the truth was. And that's the other thing, guys. I'm not a fanboy. It's other people's narratives that kill everything. It's not history like we're trying to do. It's his story. And I hate it. And that's why I started doing this because I was watching channels and I'm like, that's wrong. But I was a mess at the time. But I'm like, that's wrong. That's wrong. And not like a know-it-all. Everyone knows who watches. I, I'm the first to admit I'm, I'm not a know-it-all at all. Just like how Marky Mark changed my mind. But the bot, see, I just changed. See, I, I do not lose my train of thought, though, uh, quite often. But I my, I have all, all of my dirty whatever shit that I've done is out there. So you could try to say whatever you want about me. And everything that it does come out of my mouth is factual, meaning factual, meaning I mean it. But if it's wrong or something like that, I listen and boom, I don't have that ego. Like, no, I have to be right all the time. That's what's wrong with everyone. No, he did this. I, no, he fucking didn't. He did this. My point being, though, is this, I'm not even going to say it. This guy is, makes up a number and starts sending stuff out though to Frankie saying that he's off the production. He's off of this and that. And he's off of, and he th he thought it was me. And I, uh, and he called up OG Mike and he's like, what's going on? And he knows how busy I am. Cause I wasn't answering calls because my father is, you know, what his situation with the cancer and I'm helping him out. So I'm not, you know, I'm busy daily always. And um, I didn't even realize it was like that. And he's like, yeah, I was getting messages, man, uh, about uh, that you don't want me on the production, that this and that, all because they wanted the paper. Go get the paperwork yourselves. Go get the paperwork. Ghost was just saying to me, he was like, La I could tell he was laughing in the text. He's like, it's out there. Get it. No, they just want someone to send it to them, you know, on to, you know, this and that. And send it and not do the actual work that's required. So all he had to do was just be like, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, Loomis is cool, this or that. But no, he had to, though, be, he had to throw him that little curveball of, but watch, watch. What did I ever do to you? What did I ever do to you? Nothing. Stop your obsession, too. And you're not going to be able to get to talk to them or whatever. They're very loyal and they don't talk to just fucking anyone. And I'm honored and all that. So whatever you're trying to do, fucking, it, you're just going to hit a wall at the end of the day. And um, strike the channel. And, uh, you know, ooh, I got to go tell now, whatever. Make a, make a show about me, how I'm the biggest piece of shit. I'm not going to go strike them. But yet you preach so much about rats, 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 rats. What did you do in your life that makes that so exceptional that makes you to put down everyone? I want to know that. Number one. I used to like, though, too, this channel, like way like back in the day. I used to listen to it daily because it's one of the first channels that came out. It's uh, until I heard, though, the Gotti movie thing. And I saw the Gotti and I was like, all right, he's just going to say whatever the Gotti's want him to say. You know, and um, hold on, I'm just checking. Um, Joe, what's up, Joe? You just texted me. I'm on live right now, buddy. I'm on live. I just have the notifications on in case I if, if I have to thank anyone for uh, that. Um, well, that's the thing. And this man right here, guys, is the real deal. And he knows, and he has paperwork beyond paperwork beyond paperwork. I could have just called up Ghost and said, go send those over real fast. I didn't. Why? He did the work. So we should do the work, right? So I took care of the production here doing B-roll stuff. And Frankie was getting me paperwork. Frankie's part of the team. So he's basically me when it comes to doing a production and doing this and that. And then so by, go, by back door me to go to Frank. And then he had the nerve to text me and go, I want my $200 back. And I said, okay, come to Moore's. I'll give you your $200 back. And then he writes, this isn't high school. I, I'm not getting into trouble by going there. And what did he think? I was just going to start teeing off on him. I said, come to Moore's. I'll give you the money. You know, and um, the nerve to say. 
sorry, I was seeing when I was looking at comments, but the nerve to, uh, I, not the nerve, but to think that like, oh yeah, we're well, going to do something violent. To you. He's like, this, you know, this isn't high school anymore. I just said, come and get the money. That's all. I didn't mm-hmm. want to pay the uh, cash app tax, let's say. And let's put a tax on him right now. I can give a shit about the 200. Um, and um, that's that. But he only went out to Boston to try to get to Red Shea. It's the only reason why. And I knew Johnny would have looked at him and said, Johnny's very low, low, low key. Would have looked at he like, no. He's not, he doesn't talk to like every like he he doesn't just go on everyone's dope podcast and just open up to everyone, or I can't just get him to come to dinner with you, this or that. So um that's the only reason why um he went out there. And the funniest thing, too, guys, with all this, all these channels, though, that that consider themselves not rats or whatever, besides, like, the we push back guy, I like him. Um, but the, uh, like, the uh, like a lot of other channels, though, because, I mean, he has, like, a family connection with that. So, I I mean, and we've spoken on the phone and uh, cleared that right up and because at first it was taken no wrong. And what I'm learning in this process of the YouTube and just in life in general, guys and ladies, whenever you hear someone say something before going nuts and reacting, make sure you get the other side of the story too. I used to not do that. Someone would be like, well, this guy said this, boom, I'm going nuts, you know, just got to get both sides of the story. So after I got both sides of the story though, from Frank and talked to this individual again, uh, Sending me texts now. How's your father? How's your father? But then Buffalino and this and that, like trying to like, you know, placate me. We're from the same area. We're going to run into each other again. And no, I'm not going to do anything or like, you know, I'm going to, you're going to see me again. But it's, uh, what are you doing? You reap what you sow. So everything that's going on with that channel and everything, it's because of their own actions. So if you're going to be putting down people and degrading people constantly and calling them this and that, when you probably never even served one day in jail or never even got even arrested, who are you? Who are you? Usually when you have a guy who's not connected in any way or friendly in any way with like the mob, you know, they just stay neutral and they just bring out. They just, you know, stay neutral and just say what's going on. That's what I tried doing when I was out with what I was doing it with with, talking to everybody. Whatever they say, I'm just interviewing them. If I don't agree with it, I'm not going to start being like, well, this and that and la-di-da-da-da. So, and I think my friend Scotty was the one, though, that said that first about uh, the other guy's channel who went to wrestling. Uh, You know who I'm talking about. Um, And good, I wish him success. But, uh what did any of these guys do that makes them think that they could like you know what did they achieve in their life what have they done like you know not none of it and it's just it's just laughable and then you know you hide comments and stuff like that because you, you don't want to hear this or hear that and please please go you know try to strike us i don't see we're not doing nothing wrong here we're not saying names but try to strike if you want because i mean you know you're a rat then right and um and send me a cease and exist please go ahead because me i don't got anything to lose and i don't give a fuck and people know that who know me i don't i really don't care i'm over it i've been over it with with whatever i'm 42 years old i'm single and i have no children whatever whatever yeah, you guys, Joy, listen, this was actually going to be a mem- – I was going to do this membership because we only have like three or four members because we started it. But join our membership for amazing perks and support the channel here at YouTube Sponsor Channel. Thank you very much, Ro. And uh, and that's like where you guys are really going to get, though. Like I got some great, real great insight on a lot of stories. You could probably tell how I'm holding back because I have to in a way because of the channel and i also have a partner og mike who's on vacation and i have to respect that and not just come on here and just shoot off you know crazy stuff like you know with that it's just i have to be a little bit restrained on this so also funny how all the rat haters seem to be rats themselves that's that's it 
that's it. Except though the rat haters who actually though like did a, a long term, like anyone who went into prison because of one or whatever, like you know, Frank, for example, you know, then you yeah, then you have like you know, I absolutely that rat, but all these rat haters, I think they say it so much because that's like you know, it's almost like the same analogy. Your girl, your girl keeps asking you, are you cheating? 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 It's like, why does she keep asking me? I'm gonna wait a minute. Does she have a guilty con? Like you, it's like it goes with that. Frank, try me fronto fro, my man. What's up? Appreciate you watching from Boston, my favorite city. Great city. Love Boston. Don't like the Red Sox. You could probably see the Yankee stuff up here, pal. But uh I uh, love, though, uh, the city, and I always respect, though, the Boston-New York rivalry in sports. So thanks for being here, Fronto. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, Joe 10. Became a new – listen, and you guys are going to see, we're going to start putting them up. And I didn't notice, but everyone sees it publicly, and it's going to be uh, – and the only reason of why their membership, though, because it has different guidelines and different rules on it, and I, you could speak more on what you want to speak on. And it's just more private and stuff like that. So we're going to have some great shows on there. Some even bullshit behind the scenes stuff that's like, you might even be stupid, like whatever, but just give you guys a peek in uh, me and Mike's, I guess, everyday live and who we're going to be interviewing behind the scenes with people. Oh God, ghost would kill me if I said it, but we just, I, I'm not going to say it, but we, we got a great one though, coming up though soon, folks. We got a great one coming up soon. So my whole point though on this, and I'm and I could just I could just end this and then we could bet we could go back uh back and forth. I'm what was that a half hour? Because I said I'm gonna talk for like just a quick like half hour. Guys, get your own research, do your own thing. If you start making stuff up, you might get views and you might get away with it for a year, two years, maybe 10 years, but it's always going to come back. Always. But the truth always reveals itself. So, and the different relations, it's the first off, it, the fanboys, like we talked about last week, you know what I mean? They're fans of like these guys, which is weird, but uh, they are. And I'm not saying, and if any mobsters are out there or ex mobsters watching or anything like that, I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying they would even tell you what are you, you're a fan of my cousin, uh, getting fucking shot right in front of me and falling down in my fucking life. You're, you're like that lifestyle. It's weird. It's just not. And uh, even the real ones I talk to even say that you could have, it. I do this because I am sick of people trying to change history for their own narrative. Join the membership too. And the first show is going to be what I went through out in Boston um, with the Bulger project and uh, because certain people wanted certain narratives and this and that, and that's going to be, that's going to be good. But, uh, and also some other, some other stuff that uh, we have to go, but keep your integrity and the rest will fall into place. 100%. Every time I hear integrity though, it reminds me of John though, in the way he's all, it's always going to come back. Like that's you, you reap what you sow. So, and if this feels like, oh, just because Joey's starting though to say this, we're no, I got a call today from, and I'm sure he's not going to mind me saying this from Frankie from the channel. And uh, it was just the last straw right then and there because he went through a lot of shit in a few weeks thinking that I told him that he's off the production and all that type of shit. So they play those, they don't, they play those type of games. Get your own project, get your own research. I could call ghost at any freaking time and tell him, send me this. I don't, he would, but I don't. Why? Because he went and got it. Do you want it? Go and get it. It's out there. What do you think? We're special. We can get certain files different from you. Go and get it. But. I challenge any one of them two to come on this show. I'll, you know, just like we did a long time ago with Lee and, and have a gentleman like discussion about it. But 
enough is enough with uh, with the bullshit, with the lies, with the I'm this, my family's this, my family's so t- mobbed up. and No, they're not. Neither is mine. Like, I just, I don't know. We talked to the guys. If you didn't see the episode Fanboys of the Mafia that we did last week, it was a pretty good one. It's You'll find it in the live section. Check back on that one. But the whole message that I'm just trying to get out here. What's up, Marky? Mark, there's my man right there, Marky. A man, a real one who's been through it and is doing good and is out living the good life. And he'll be the first to tell you that this that life is not um, a life to uh, be fan of. It's not Hollywood. People watch Goodfellas all the time. They turn into mob snobs. And then they just like, and that's fine. You know, I read a ton of my, it's interesting. It absolutely is interesting. But it doesn't mean I'm. A, I could become a friend, I guess, someone. But like fan, I first off, I just I don't put anyone on a pedestal. And I remember when I first all got sober, Scotty from st- uh, the one percent, check out the channel, was telling me like, stop putting people on ped. Like who are you know what I mean? We all we all put our pants on the same way in the morning. So that's that. But check out though that fanboys of the mafia. But. I made friends from doing this and stuff like that, but there's different, those are two different F's, friends and fans of that. Could you be fan of the genre of the true crime? Like, absolutely though. But I mean, you gotta, you gotta really think about like, you know, people used to put Michael Jordan posters because, you know, he achieved championships and stuff. And now, you know, you just, it's different now. People want, you know, <laughs> these guys like listen those po- the mob posters are cool i'm getting all that but i'm just saying like and no disrespect to mr molino or anything and joe i'm the one in the buffalino family that we spoke back and forth a while ago uh but like people would be like oh he's gonna be here we gotta run here that blah 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 like that's just not me that's all that's not me but uh everything comes out Everything comes out. And you know what's weird? Does God or higher powers throw this shit on our lap? I sw- On everything I hold sacred on my family, we are not doing this episode just because of what is going on, though, with, you know, everyone else popping it up. This has been going on for the past three weeks. And I kept it cool. And I just was like, I'm not, I'm, all right, we'll handle it behind the scenes. But after what I heard today, that was it. That was it. So thank you very much, Dr. Vinny Bamboots, new member. Appreciate you so much. We got a lot of people in the comments. I'm going to get to all of them too. You know how we do it here. And uh, what's up, Steve? Where's my man, Steve? Oh, every time I get it, I left it in the car. But Steve was the winner of our OTF knife. I think that was back for the 225th hundred subscriber, Steve. But um. We love you, pal. We hope Farmer's out there, too. He was a winner of the last one as well. When we do giveaways, guys, you know, we'll do, like, self-defense type uh, stuff, though. You know, whether it's a knife or whatever, you know. Ro always jokes, like, you know, when we hit our 10,000th, you know, it's going to be a shotgun. No. <laughs> you got to watch because, you know, these guys are probably going to get this one struck, and then that'll be boom. But I never said a name, never put a picture up or whatever. So rat away if you want. But, um. <laughs> look at this if you guys even know look at this if you order little caesars from where i'm from or from where i'm from you're definitely not leaving the establishment you're in looking the same <laughs> it's an insult to us no guys everyone else out there though in the world we do have great pizza it's uh, scranton pennsylvania pittston pennsylvania area we have great uh pizza here i always say new york's number one this is my number two, I don't consider Chicago pizza. I think eat with your hands, not a fork. But uh, yeah, I'm telling you, NEPA, Barstool's been down here at all. I'm not saying he's the know-it-all of whatever, but I mean, we got a good place. And we have Old Forge, which they call pizza capital of the world. If you look it up, Old Forge pizza. And um, all of which, which I'm not even the biggest fan of. I'm more a bigger fan of like Serpico's, Angelo's, Jerry's, the Round Pie. And uh, we make great pizza. If you come through anyway, like Greg just said, best pizza in the world, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Um, 
So, guys, my hope, let me just, like, make this screen large because every time I see a comment, like, because I don't want to be rude to anyone. And that's just, you know, I try to get to you as all. I try to you as all on the show. But, like, you know, you're changing your na names and this and that. My name's Eric Perluk. Like, that's, you know, I can tell anyone that, you know, change it into, like, a mobster character or this or that. Thank God I didn't keep Loomis Santoro because the reason why it was Santoro was just throwing up a nickname there because Scotty from the 1% said that like I had an ad like Nikki from uh casino. So he used to call me Santoro. So we were just rocking with Luma Santoro. But then I thought people were starting to think I'm Italian. I'm Irish and I'm proud to be Irish. And um, I'm not a wannabe Italian. No disrespect to the Italian heritage. I love you. A lot of my friends are Italian. Love them. My brother's married to a hundred percent Italian and, uh, and her family. I see all the, the I love them. But I'm Irish. I don't wish to be Italian. I'm Irish. Oh, wrong side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Be and be proud of your name and heritage of whoever you are. If you, oh, I wish I was like Marky was saying it the best the other day. Be proud of who you are. Don't change who you are. Be like to try to be. I don't know. But you reap what you sow. You absolutely do. And that's probably... Oh, this is what I meant about the higher power. You see how my mind just goes all over the place? Meaning, this is probably all happening to them right now. Like, it's because... I don't know. It makes you think. Because everything comes back. Everything comes back around. You're going to fucking cheat on someone. You're going to fucking lie about one this person. Especially on the internet. It's open door season. You're going to get called out. I knew before I started this channel, I knew people are going to look into me. What do I got to hide? I talk about my addiction, which on Sunday, and it's not going to be a live, guys. I made a, um, people were asking me to do one on addiction. So it's, it'll be the video and I'll set the premiere for it. I'm finishing up the editing on it, but it's on addiction. And it's actually like my story. I never even told it or anything. And i uh, been through a lot of shit with that. And that'll be uh, released on um, Sunday. And you, you guys could check the community or tomorrow night. We're still doing the show. Um, and I should have the exact time on that. But that's Sunday on the addiction. And um, yeah, and I did the, oh, that's what a lot of the, the you know, the mob guys too will just be like, oh, he's just a junkie. He's just this or that. He's just a blah, 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 this or that. Okay, that's great. You were never affected by that in any way, beloved one or whatever. I'm over that. I'm over that. Keyword is was. I don't know. Anyone intelligent out there, when someone just says something like that to them, don't they ever like, you know, why did why do people take what everything says? So start taking it with a grain of salt until you get the other side of the story as well. And then proceed. That's what I had to learn the hard way. And it's the truth. And uh, you make up stories about people. They're going to come out and they're going to get and they're going to you know what you're on the internet you're on the internet you try stealing other people's stuff you're going to get called out though for it it's the bottom line so whatever happens though with you with that or whatever i don't wish ill will on anyone at all take it as a learning experience for yourself you reap what you sow and with that, let's hit some comments. I mean, I was even like, right right when I got home, hey, what's up, buddy? I owe you $200, nothing. But then all of a sudden, though, when people find out that the Buffalino project's going on, they all come in. You know, a lot of fake people pretend to be your friend to try to get this info or that info and this or that. And uh Yeah. That's not happening. I'm solid with them. They're solid with me. And um, that's that on that end. And this little thingy right here, because I know I'm saying posters. People are like, what are you talking about? You're something to Russell. No, this was actually Russell's, which was presented to him in 1966. And this is, we're working on a project. And uh, this is theirs. And they're just letting me hold it for the project. I do not respect Russ, though, the way he did it. You know, you got to respect it. And everyone thinks it's all bad. Well, everyone wants to hear about the murder and gore and all this stuff. Well, there's also some real good stuff that you guys don't know what what other what these people do. 
and um, we're going to be showing you that. So who do we got in here? DL Loomis absolutely does not want Little Caesars. Uh, <laughs> I emailed you, Loomis. The email address didn't work. P-E-R-L-U-K-E-E-R-I-C. It's got to work. Unless you emailed the hard truths one, because I don't even have that one, because I have to get it from Mike with the password. Right there. You could email me right now, and I would immediately go get it. And thank you again to Joe Town, Jack, and Ruby. Appreciate you guys for the donation. Reverend Al Sharpton, what's going on? How are you, my friend? Baller T. Washington, if I ask your meatballs are homemade and you say, let me check, see ya. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay, at first I'm like, what? I got you. I hear what you say. My wife wants me to write a book on my life, the life of a nobody. Mickey Griggs, why are you call yourself a nobody, man? Why? Because you don't have Wikipedia. We talk to people who we don't just we don't talk to people who just have high status. I have guests that are coming on that are just from the neighborhood, guys that I grew up with, or this or that. We treat every show the same as if we're going to be speaking with whoever. And we don't put. That's probably why we'll never grow as a big channel. Because we don't kiss ass, and we never will. I mean, I could have went any route with this channel, kissed some asses, tried to make all the right contacts with the biggest YouTubers. Like, I, I didn't know. I, we don't. We, I can't. I can't go to, like, I, I, I have to be honest with you, and, or it just, it, I, it just bothers me. So, um, but I, I can at least rest my head at night, every night, knowing that what I'm saying is true. And I, uh, it's all, I have nothing to hide. It's all true. You, you guys who are throwing out phony shit out there and yeah, maybe you're getting the views. Congratulations, but it's going to catch up to you. It's going to catch up to you. Any questions guys? Same here, Loomis. That's why I like you. You seem like a solid dude. No bullshit. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Man, I wish man we could have like a subscriber party and all of us get together and like you know meet and freak and talk like everyone who the, the ones who are in the chat with us all the time. That'd be awesome for real. But I love though on this channel we do put faces to the name because we let people come on and speak. Like I said, you don't need no Wikipedia. You're a man. You got a you got a story. You're a woman. You got a story. Boom. I don't care if you're on the fucking view or whatever show. It does nothing to me. Anyway. Baller T. Russ, Russ, big as a bus. Oh, Baller T, what are you, uh, trolling now or what? Craig, what's going on? Great to see Craig here at a reality report with Craig and friends. Thanks for joining us. Yep, there's the email there. Again, corruption. Definitely email me. All mobsters don't kill everyone. 100%. I mean, I wouldn't even say if anyone, I don't even know if any of them do, right? Like, allegedly. But no, that's why we don't we don't speak on current events or anything like that because we don't want to get people jammed up or any of that type of stuff. So, um, but it's all out there, you know, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Now, supposedly to get made, though, you got to take one out. So are, if you're you can still be a mobster and not be made. You know, not to the family, but I guess to like the true crime genre or whatever, or maybe just an associate to the mob. But it's supposed to be if you're in the mob, uh, you got to put someone out. And I heard there was exceptions, though, with real good money earners that they didn't have to do that and stuff. And like Ghost says, they always change the fucking goalpost. The rules rules change. But the original rules, we went back on this. Remember when uh, Joey Molino was saying um, he was right? Meaning pertaining to the rules of Cosa Nostra. Like that's original rules. 
that is a real thing. But um, all mobsters don't kill everyone. I, I agree. I agree. Mike, what's up? Big Mike, there he is on vacation, my man. Where are you at today? I saw the sweet home Alabama, all that shit, Mike. I love it. I love it. I'm still going to kill you, though, for the uh, Little Caesars, but I love you. <laughs> road trip, where are we meeting? I know, road, that'd be so great. Meet up at a rail rider game. Vinny, are you are you from by me? I definitely meet up and go to a rail rider game, guys. The Yankees AAA organization has played here in our town and uh, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Northeastern Pennsylvania. When I talk on YouTube, it's NEPA, the whole county. So um, that's uh, and what I love though about it too is that when like you know the big time players like they get hurt, they come back for their rehab assignments. I saw Jeter up there, A Rod, all them because back in the day and. Uh, good times but rail riders game not a lot of people know about the rail riders unless you're actually from here or a diehard fan of AAA baseball so Vinny Bob boots man if you're from around here absolutely you saw my email email me up Loomis did I don't know what that means but uh thank you DL and for the little Caesars comment Oh, shit. Baller T, apologies. The old school East End. My man thought you'd get it. E -E. I Now, let me go back to what you said. Oh, yeah. I thought because you said the name Ross, you were because as I was talking about uh, Buffalino, but I got you, Baller T. I got you, my man. The World Cup. Is coming to America. I think New Jersey are any of you guys looking forward to seeing the Italians and others play. I'd be interested in seeing that in New Jersey too, which is great. Cause that's very close to me driving. When I say very close to I me in mean two hours, but still for me, that's nothing. Uh, I did not know that. I don't watch news or like any, like, I just, it's my life has been a little, you know, flipped upside down. Uh, took a complete 180 like a month and a half ago. So I've been in the dark on a lot of things. All right. Not originally. Moved to Northampton County about 14 years ago. No shit. All right, Vinny. All right. See, that's what I love, though, the most. And you know what? This whole show, when I started, I thought, like, oh, I was meeting someone that was like, oh, my God, Loomis, I didn't realize that you're from the area. You know, I meet up, though, and then, you know, they just sit there. Under, it's like they're on a mission. They're on a mission. What could I get? Can I can I can I get a dinner at Red Shea? Yeah. Come on. Come on. What else we got? The Italians are coming to New Jersey. The Pizza Connection Part Two. <laughs> the joke. I mean, Will. Will always cracking them out. We could meet in Kansas City, center of the country, 40-mile road trip for me. Hey, I'm down. You guys know me. I'll go anywhere. For real. I am down. I, that's why I could, when the show first started, I was just hit the road, keep going. Obviously, the streams make it easier, but I do like it better when you're sitting down with actual guests. But um, these, these uh, streams from, like, you know, when COVID happened and all that, I mean... I mean, they're great. You, you know, you utilize what you have. The reality port with Craig and friends. What's popping, my man? Good channel over there, guys. Subscribe up to them. And, uh, bro, did I give you the link or no? Because I know Mark wanted to pop on, which means that we're not getting this. This, this episode isn't getting monetized. But, uh, <laughs> Marky Mark, I'm just like, I'm kidding with you, man. But, uh, after every episode that we do with you, uh, it's always like, because eh. <laughs> they review all the episode and say, I didn't realize they're so strict on language. So guys, before we, before we post a video, it says, is this video made for kids or yes, it's made for kids. I always click, no, it's made for kids. It's not made for kids. 
So isn't that 18 and above? But yet, though, we can't get monetized for cursing? It's weird. What a world. Great, though, seeing you, Greg. If you are proud of yourself, no one else will be. I like that. You know, Ben, it took me a while, though, to finally start being proud and loving, though, my self-interested rap because, you know, you hear, when you're trying to get better and uh, it's the mental health, the whole aspect of it is uh, – it's just, it's serious shit, man. And when you're trying, and when you can get yourself to a different spot, absolutely, you know, start being proud of yourself. Start loving yourself. You can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. So I agree. And I never thought that, that was even possible. I used, like I told you guys, I used to see like from a year ago or like, no, actually it was when I was using it. So it would say like, let's on Facebook memories or whatever. And I would see me from like the old show I do. And I was just, uh, like I was like, I wanted to almost like just smash myself in the face being like, you're such a douchebag. dude. Like, why did you ever like, don't ever show your face again? Cause that's what that does to you. But you get out of that as time goes on, but you, you got to work at it though. You get out of that funk and then you just re you start getting a lot wiser. I'm noticing with age, um, things just start, just, you just start realizing stuff naturally. Like, like what I was saying, like, don't jump the gun. When you hear one person say something, get both sides of the story. That's a big life lesson. Uh, just little stuff though, like that. Take everything with a grain of salt at first, unless you have proof in your hands. You know what I'm saying? And uh, everything that I do say, it comes from the proof proof of people that uh, I talk to, or and it's not just from files. Like guys, we don't go after just the files, but the paperwork. Yeah, they help, but we want to hear the mobster. I mean the. The mobsters, yeah, fuck it, the mobster side of the story as well. And um, just like with the Whitey Project, you were you were going to hear his side of the story just because it was never told. That doesn't mean, oh, we're for Whitey Bulger. But some jag off in Boston, uh, he didn't like that narrative and some other uh, just whatever. That's not what stopped this by no means. But financially, guys, it takes a lot to... Uh, put out a doc and i mean i just started this hardcore about a, what, a month ago two month and a two months hardcore though with it though and it's already had to spend you know and i what's great is no no investors no nothing so it's like our project so everything's going into it though that way and yeah when people don't try though getting you know messing with that yeah it gets you though know, going but that's why uh ndas are involved and uh all agreements though like that and copyrights and all this stuff but just like some pictures uh that we put on the on the family page with russ i'm seeing them now on like google on reddit and stuff and like they get rid of the you know and that's fine you're just just a pit you know but we're because we have we have pictures that nobody ever seen so uh and that's why we you know it's going to be different on that channel but um what do i always do someone took a picture uh one time and uh what did he do? He messaged me first. It was like, hey, man, do you mind if I share this? I'm like, no, go ahead. That's what I would do. Someone took a thumbnail, like a literally a, the exact thumbnail that I had made one time. And I video, I don't even tell you what I said to him, but he took it down. But uh, just make your own stuff. Make your own stuff. You know, if you have a computer, you got the copy right there. Shout out to Greg. There's and you know that produces files. That's all you got to do. You don't got to call someone and say that. Oh, be careful around Loomis. He's this and that and la di da da da. You know, and what you say hold true by that. You said you're never going to have on rats. You're never going to have on police. You're never going to have on CO. You're never going to have whatever. But yet, you work with a CO. Corruption and connection, great channel, guys. Get on that. Get on that channel. He's boots on the ground. I love it. Loomis, when I was five years old, I asked my father if we were Irish. He said, shut up and drink your whiskey. <laughs> I like it. Did it. When you had the cold, though, did, did it give you a little bit of uh, Jamie or Brandy to, uh, to help you out as a kid? 
my I'm, I'm just saying I heard a lot then I'm, that didn't happen though to me I used to know always I think I was a big partier because I grew up around like my uncles and uh they would always have like parties up at the at the, uh, the actual family home they'd all meet there and um like I was a rug rat at the point three four years old or whatever no and just you know I, that's probably what got me so like interested and keen like you know to it but for me I just didn't know how to behave when I drank and uh, used. I did not know how to behave at all. And um, I don't even know how to behave a lot normal. I'm still working on it. But uh, I could just say, you know, life's a lot better since I stopped doing that. And please, I want everyone to know I have nothing against booze. I have nothing against what you guys do. I'm just saying me personally, I just know I can't do it. Plus, I like to know my surroundings and it feels good. You know what I mean? And um yeah, I'm ranting about that, but you guys will see um episode on Sunday. Please smash that like button to get this moving. We're just getting into it, folks. We ain't nowhere near done. We're just getting into it. Chris, where's Chris at? Oh, Chris, I'm glad that you're here, buddy. I made an episode on addiction that's going to be dropping on Sunday Um, because I know you asked me about that. And it's a pre-recorded, but I'll be in the comments and stuff like that. But I'll get the exact time, though, for you when we're doing the show tomorrow night. But it's going to be a video that's going to be up, though, anyway. So do that. If we're not striked, though, you know, if we still have a page, though, because these anti-rats are really the rats. And they try to, like, you know, do this or that, cease and exit. Like, I would laugh. I'd film that for you guys. And I don't care who's watching. I don't give. I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm trying to, I guess, think if I do, but I don't. <laughs> but, Chris, I, I would thank you, though, for uh, mentioning that because that's what got me motivated to do it. My dad used to stock John Gotti's clubhouse, and he would take me to drive by the clubhouse. Now they all call me a fat, bald snitch. So your dad used to stock John Gotti, which is he stocked them and he would take me to drive by the clubhouse. Now they call me a fat bald snit. Oh, you're talking about like people in the chats. And why are you that don't listen to them at all? All these people in the chats that were just going to try to wind you up and say this or that. And you know, they call you a snitch because your father was doing that. And you happen to be with your father. Did you, you're, uh, I, I don't know. That's not in your hands. That's almost like if my father, there was a murderer and, um, he ended up though, like cooperating that does, does that make me, I'm not saying your father's a murderer. I'm just saying, does that make me though? Snitch? Absolutely not. Bro. I know. I can't believe anyone would ask Brett that Brett's a good dude. He has great content. What happened with Brett? Man, if I had a dollar for each time I heard rat or genre, I'd be a rich girl. Same. Same. Again, you went in, you did your time, and you didn't talk or anything though like that. I think I think you 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 have the credibility to use that word. Absolutely. But I'm just saying these people that just come on and just yell rat, 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 blah, blah, blah. I always tell everyone. Guys, even think right now, I say this a lot, but if there's anyone else new watching, I'm going to say it again. If you have someone who you've been close with for a while, right, that doesn't mean that he's really a real friend yet until they are tested. If four people come after you too, is he going to, is he going to stand his ground or is he going to run? You don't know if, you, if he's around your girl or this or that. Is he going to try to get at that or is he going to be a solid gentleman, stand up and, you know, respect the boundaries of that situation if you didn't if those situations didn't happen yet to you and whoever you speak with then you really don't know them yet as a as a solid friend another example i always tell it i walked in the moors someone was talking about scotty and his family from pittston what did i do i just i called up scotty i was getting and i go hey just I mean, you're saying it here, here, just, will, will you say the same thing to him? No, 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 blah, 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 this or that, nah. And the other thing I hate the most, a so-called friend, they'll go to a bar, someone else will be like, hey, you friends with Loomis? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then that guy will be like, yeah, but 
Loomis though could be crazy at times, and then a friend and or an asshole at times, and a friend will be like, "Yeah, he could be, but you know this." No, you shut it down right there, and you tell the guy, "That's my fucking friend." Do you want to tell him yourself what you're saying or not? I hate when people cater to people like that. Like, yeah, you could be because they're scared to speak their mind or some shit. I promise you, if you just be real out there and just honest and just start open, because I I wasn't honest growing up. I'm going to be honest because I was an addict. So I just, as addicts, we lie. But uh, if you're just honest and just do your own work, put in the work. Instead of ghosts, could I have all the paperwork that you fucking worked on and blah, 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 blah. You know, I would never even ask that. Get the work. Now you could say, well, you asked Frank that. Yeah, Frank is part of the project. I'm doing filming production. I'm with the I'm with the Buffalino family down here. He's part of the team. So that's different. As a team, we all come as one. But I'm just saying in general, if I want to look up something on a certain guy, I'll go and get that work myself. That's it. And then when I do, though, I'm not going to make up stories and say, ah, oh, Russ was on wire saying that. Uh, like, 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 do they sit there and be like, maybe if I tell them that he did this, it'll be like, just like the other guy who said he lost his finger from, from a shootout with the state police. He lost his finger. No, <laughs> he lost his finger as a mechanic when the engine just dropped down from the block. So, uh, and I believe that he got glass in his eye, shard glass. And that's like a piece of shard glass in his eye, organic, which made his eye like that. And um, that's what I was told. But, and this guy was a gangster, supposedly, though, who did cooperate. And like, why, listen, why do you just have to lie? First off, this story here is interesting enough not to make stuff up. And the Whitey Bulger story is interesting enough not to make stuff up. I think all of these stories are. So uh, just say what's out there. Yeah, you know, you get that quick fix. Yeah, look at all the views I got, but it, it's going to come back and haunt you. And I hope I'm sounding like a douchey, fucking annoying scumbag to them. Bring it. Fucking bring it. Anyway, <laughs> are you still bringing the Bulger Project, Loomis? Yes, that's on shelf. What we're doing, though, though, is we want to get the Russ uh, doc done right here. Holding this right here. And... um. Because it's my hometown. And I was saying cost. Very costly. Going up to Boston. Going doing this or that. Plus all we had actors involved with that. Because that one was going to be like a reenactment. And they were on strike. All the actors from SAG at the time. It was just a mess. But this guy goes and tells Frankie. Oh well he didn't even get that one done. Guys. It sometimes takes 10 years for a documentary. Like I'm talking, I like I, I just watched one OG Rube, the one about the kids that got locked up and like they treat it like garbage. Remember, they went back and all the evidence was still in the building and all that type of shit. There's a part in there where she's like, well, okay, I've been working on this documentary for 10 years and blah, blah. Guys, it's a lot of work. So what he was basically trying to tell Frankie is, oh, Loomis, and he, you know, the Whitey Bulger project, oh, that didn't come no to fruition, this or that. Or, it didn't go anywhere. You could be in pre, post, whatever production, as long as you want to be. I still have the files. I still have Bulger audio tapes that nobody heard before. I still have all that shit, which I can actually share, though, on our, uh, what do you call it, membership, though, uh, page. Definitely. So then why do people do Patreon? What's the difference from that and membership? Yeah, you, yeah, Ruby, man, that was wild, huh? And they weren't even, I don't want to ruin that. I won't, never mind. I don't want to ruin it on people. We didn't say the name of it, but it kills me though that they, like, none of them really got uh, held accountable for it, you know, but they got exposed. They got exposed. That's when you stop the guy talking and call the dude he's talking about and hand him the phone. That's what I did. <laughs> exactly. That's what I did. Will Hybrid. I knew I liked you. Are you talking about when I was in Moore's with Scotty? Yeah. That's exactly what you do. Dissect every little word to say to know the truth. You got to. These days, you got to. Guys are sitting there like, what story can I make up today that, you know, and what bothers me the most, and I don't know why it does. I just love history. I don't know where it comes from. My father was a history major. I wasn't, but uh, I don't know where it comes from, but 
I just, I have like this obsession with history because I just love like the old school times and this or that. And when I see it being fucked with just because people want to tell their own narrative, well, that's why people like me and Mike and uh, others and Frank and all of us, we have pages that um, try to expose that because the sad thing is these guys are talking to people with millions of subscribers and that's that's what people are going to think but for the few that could find the, my hope is the few that could find this channel though i just hope before i go before i pass you know and i and know that i'm leaving everything it's genuine and it's coming from not only the police not only the files but from the mobsters themselves and associates and all of that stuff we try to get the whole story for you instead of just one side of the story and we just try to say it like it is we don't try to get views by doing this or that or whatever yeah of course we plan shorts and be like oh yeah it's gonna be a good short or whatever but what we do here is we just try though to expose though the truth on other people want to that's why it, it kind of it i don't know if this shit's been going on forever but like all the history stuff that i read there not just the mafia stuff but the other stuff like with vikings and all that uh, how true really is it you know because people change narratives all the time for example you see someone gets in a fight right and then you know he'll be going telling uh someone will be like oh you should have seen it he hit him 25 times when he ended when he ended up hitting him like three or four like they always have to like elevate like whatever just tell the fucking story or you're gonna get called out bro you're my idea of a real woman if i live near you i would full court press you <laughs> i like the way you think ro just said though she loves you but uh, i don't know if it full court press her ro ro you are cool and i can tell by the content creators your help gun so gun smoke nyc crime spot shout out loomis and lefty those four are creatures are different from the rest and the type i relate to you're forgetting OG Mike in there as well, my man. But thank you very much, Chris. Um, this is Mike's, just so everyone knows too, this isn't my channel. This is me and Mike's channel, 50-50 down the middle. Um, because that's how much I love Mike and I wanted him on board. And as you get, it's hard for me to do a show by myself. I'm just going to be honest because I, I, I lose track. I'm sure you guys already could tell from even in the beginning. I bounce around, but I promise I come back though to the... Um, actual uh thing i was gonna say but thank you though chris and uh i really do appreciate that very much michael ball loomis i've been around since day one you got a great thanks mike i appreciate that and see and i like seeing new names coming into the chat because I know other people's watch, but you, you, like the number that you guys see on YouTube, that's just the people in the chat. There's more people watching. So anyone who's watching, drop in. This is a, this channel is a channel for the people. Like 100%. That's why we have yous on. We have anyone on. It's not about status or this or that. Yeah, you know, we'll have interviews coming up, though, with people, though, who, but, you know, on that, you know, they might have a Wikipedia and be known or this. Or, that's great. But I don't separate them from any other human being. They're just doing a different job or just have a different story or whatnot. We're all human. <laughs> Greg, the D team, don't play with Delta. Salute. But thank you very much, Mike. It's great to see you here. There's so many, man. I'm trying to get to them. Keep them coming. Great job, Loomis. You were real Dre G. Oh, you got to watch Frank. Thanks. Yeah, man, that's Streeto. You know, after I just heard that bullshit, and I apologize, man. I wish I was able though to answer the phone at that time and this or that. But uh that wasn't me. I love you to death. You're on board. Don't listen to them. And you know, you came in new on the YouTube thing. Just know, and I'm not I'm not saying I'm some expert, but I've been doing it almost every day for two years solid. Um, don't trust everyone that you speak with, my man. You know, you definitely found people here who just are honest and going to say how, no matter how bad, good, bad, or indifferent it is, you just got to lay the truth down as it is. Am I ever wrong? Absolutely. And then I love when one of you is correct me. 
I don't take it as like, oh, what did they correct? I take it as nice. Now I know the truth. Drop the ego. If you drop your ego a bit, just like if you have a comment with something, someone on YouTube, and then they prove you wrong, but you got to keep going. And then, then you'll put you'll put a comment like, well, go bang your sister. Or the, like, just admit that you were wrong. It's, I don't, it just boggles my mind. Okay, Drew, you're taking all this with a laugh. I just wanted to make sure. I, if I lived here, I'd be wearing body armor. Jesus. Carlos, say uh, thanks for being here, my man. Love Carlos. Love seeing him coming in. Gentlemen. Frank, no worries. Thanks for you and OG Mike. We're here, my man. We're here. And if any other little minions try calling and saying this and saying that, You knew right away. You knew when he said, oh, I'm cool. I'm friends with Loomis. And then afterwards, tries to put him, you know, you hear him putting out, wait, is this supposed to be a friend? Do you want to get close with? And realize that, guys. Don't get close with people who, who are bashing like they're friends. Why would you even want to? You know, oh, he's a friend of mine, but, you know, you got to be wary around him. And you got to, you know, what are you going to be wary around me for? It's just stupid, stupid shit. I say it all the time because I heard it from PBD on that Patrick but David. He said, lazy, un, lazy, untalented, but extremely motivated people are the most dangerous. The ones that are trying to find it like a little chink in your armor. And, uh, oh, I got this now on him and that. It's ridiculous. You know, nobody can get nothing on me. And I'm sure people will hate that. Nothing. Nothing. Possession, a couple DUIs, drug addict, alcoholic. There, that's all you got. Go nuts with that. I think it's going to be savvy, always. The day you stop learning will be the day you stop succeeding. Amen to that. Amen. Absolutely. But that's like... It's, I don't understand. Like, it's if I, like, you know, if I'm doing a project and, I, and I'm wrong on something and someone corrects me, I like that. I like the fact that, like, oh shit, no. Uh, so, for example, Joe Buffalino, perfect example. I think I do. I have the picture of it up. Hold on one second. I think I might because I have some great shots. Well, they're just from the videos that I was taking, though, from uh, Pittston, Pennsylvania, guys. This is where, uh, Rusto was from and uh, the area though here, just some nice little shots and no ghost. These are nothing to worry about by showing. And thank you, by the way. Real old school uh, town. It still looks great. Pittston still is uh, on main street, especially there's James Mest Musto with the statue. And that was just like for uh, visual type stuff. I, oh, wait. Well, all right. We lost him. Anyway, Joe said, um, what was I on? Wait. I had to show you those pictures like a douchebag when I knew what I was just going to say. Oh, wait. It was from Frankie's comment. Let me read the comment again. Guys, I'm human. I'm going to be honest with you. My short-term memory, gone. But it comes back. I'm going to drop the link. Give me a second. The day you stop learning is the day you... What the fuck was I going to say? Joe, if you're watching, I apologize, my man. <laughs> it was something good. Oh, I got it. I was told that Penn Drape was at a certain building. I did a video and a post about it. Joe told me that's not where Penn Drape was. Penn Drape was across... Uh, not directly across the street, but it's where the Columbus statue was. The building doesn't even know like exist. I wasn't like, oh no. I okay, thank you. Now I know. You know what I mean? Then you move on. I don't get that mentality. And that's why there's so many people, if you when you start reading comments, who argue all the time because they just can't admit that they are wrong. I remember I was just on a UFC uh th thing, uh watching it, and then I I put up a comment, I was wrong. And then um, the person was like, body da da da, blah, blah, blah. And he was right. And I immediately wrote under it, I was wrong. Thank you. And I actually had a lot of people who were like, wow, man, that takes a lot to admit. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I was wrong. He was right. That's 
Drop the ego. All right, let me get that link dropped for you. Like I said, anyone's welcome. Come on in. And um, we are going to get that right about now. It's the Funk Soul Brother. How about now? Uh, invite guest copied. All right, guys, it should be there in every time I get used to YouTube, like where everything's at, then they update it. And then the little things on the bottom and the top. Come on, let's get it together. All right, here we go. Every time I get used to YouTube, like where everything's at, then they update it. And then the little oh, things on the bottom. Stop. Come on, let's get it the voice. I hate my voice. Um, There it is. There it is, everyone. What's the deal, Mike? You back home? Nah, Mike's still out there. Mike's doing his thing. Wyatt, another member. And Wyatt, if you weren't on earlier, our membership shows, they're going to be coming up. And uh, now that we have, I said, I think I said that I wanted to wait till we got up to like 10 or whatever. And uh, because it's weird, but people were saying, dude, even if you have three, do them because everyone gets to see that, that you have something coming up, but it'll show though, like if it's a members only or whatever type thing. Snitch me, that's exactly what I'm not. That's the label the guys in your neighborhood say about you, sissy dress heel boy. You talking about me? Roadblock is, no, he's not talking, it's Mark. He can't be talking about me. Who Who's he talking about? I. Uh, Notorious for stealing content and then claiming somebody stole it from him. Dude's dangerous in a weirdo type of way. He the type like fish throw a rock at you and you bust his nose and he call the cops. Yeah, he calls the cops though, but he puts down everyone though who are at it. Everyone's a rat, right? But he calls the cops. Oh, you mean Michael Ball is it? Uh, sorry, Mark. Uh, he's gone. Boom. Gone. Now, here's a guy whose paper, like I tell everyone, I have all this paperwork right here. Literally all right here. I had him on to tell a story. Showed him nothing but respect. And then he has to turn into an asshole because he's got problems. But we're done, though, talking about that. Not even another word. Uh, because that's what they want. Danny Green, my man, what's going on? Danny Green from Cleveland. Good movie. Uh, Kill the Irishman, if you guys haven't seen it yet. Good movie. Um, I just want to get the comments. Guys, here it is, right? Oops. Wait, did I even drop it? There's the link is right there, guys. And uh, thank you very much, Marky, for the donation. Keep fish band donation, right? And Ro has the link for uh, uh, how to donate and not lose 30%. <laughs> so, Ro, if you could drop the donate link again, that'd be great. The fuck fish donation. I know it's a lot easier so you could see it, though, on that. But um, that's fine. Thank you so much, my man. And um, Danny Green. What's up, Mark? You coming or what? You coming in? Keep Fish banned from all chats. Donation fund. Let's kick off the donations for Fish Out of Water Foundation. My man. I thought you were coming on. And right here. Oh, got it. If you enjoy the content, donate to the channel here. I'm just waiting for... Uh... Well, I can just keep going on my own, though, if you don't come around. Let me see. I'm just waiting for... Let me shut that up.
uh, Michael Ball. And how about that, too? I ended up going, hey, great. You know, I was still respectful. And then, boom, he's, a, he's just in love with Mark, obsessed in a weird way. But, guys, the bottom of the line, wow, I did an hour and 20 on my own. Fish out of water, fun. Thank you, Ro. Uh, which is like anything. And, guys, we will hold, you know, when he comes. I didn't know, Mark, and I. my apologies for not seeing that quicker. If any of the moderators know for a fact that it's him and I miss it, please. Boom. And anyone watching, we don't kick anyone off of this channel. Even that guy said that's why he liked this channel because we don't do that. But when you're disrespecting women and you're just, and you're saying, not, you, you know, be a gentleman. I don't, do they even exist anymore? I mean, this mob, the, the mob genre, and sorry for saying genre again, Ro. I mean, you would think there'd be some gentlemen in there, you know, it's just, it's just constant, like, soap operation no this guy did that like why are you so mad man are you related to him was he your father blah 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 now if you're connected with them and this or that i'm not talking about those people i'm talking about just the regular random people out there on youtube that uh just like to say nonsense look at this we got pete coming in the house hold up one second pete and thanks again ro look at this gaudy intervolta was trash well, he said it was better than Goodfellas. Why? Because he's controlled. I'll do whatever the Gaudis say. And that's not putting the Gaudis down. I'm just saying that's uh, the way it operates. And then, like, it, then they'll get in a fight with someone, and weeks later it'll be someone else and this or that. But let's bring in Pete D., my man. What's up, Pete? What's going on, bro? How are you, man? I'm good, brother. How are you? Good, man. Good, good. Fucking, I got my cam off because I'm already laying in bed. I'm on call this weekend. No, that's all right. Guys, look at this Magviser, which is a Viking compass that uh, Pete and his uh, beautiful wife made me from the Socio Studios um, right here. And they also got, they also made us HTR OG Mike. It, look, these are so nice polyurethane up pete i love them i'm dude i'm so glad you liked them i i was i was trying to get them out to you quick you know so i was putting a rush on them oh, you do great work man i mean this is don't worry about getting it quick man i mean this is you know i was just shocked that you even did this and it's a beautiful gesture and i'm very grateful for it so thank um, you very much we're bringing in welcome. will too will's coming in to join us what's up will hey will hey. Very nice, man. Very nice. Uh, could you? Yeah, no, great stuff, Pete. Uh, Will, could you put your phone sideways or no? Yeah, yeah. There you are. Bro, Just because bro. it helps with us. Uh, see, let me put this up. Oh, here we go. Got to make sure my Yankees are out there. Hold up. My OCD is a little nutty. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me tonight. I really do appreciate it. And um, what's going on, though, man? What's real quick? Because I was just talking to Pete. So what's new with you, Pete? What's up? Talk to me. It's just working and working, bro. I know. I see that, man. Where are you, Pete? Yeah. Where, are you from? where are you from again? Originally, I'm from Brooklyn. But where do you live now? Uh, right now, I'm in Iowa. Yeah, because every time I, I was like, where does this guy live? It looks like there's like wolves sledding and snow. Like, where's where this guy at? Yeah, I'm in the middle of nothing, man. It's it's uh, it's nice. I like it. I like it. But, bro, I That's wanted to funny. say, man, I'm, you know, on this topic that you were talking about, if, if, I, if you're talking about who I think you're talking about, I've never watched that channel. Um, yeah. And it's just like, what are we I wouldn't even give it the energy, what? man. I, this, this is what they do. They, they, they talk about rats, and then when they run out of rat content, then they start drama with everybody just to try and gain views and try and gain some traction with some new bullshit. But that's all it is, is bullshit. And then they don't even know, like, let people comment. They turn the comments off. Don't they even bring up the channel's name just because. Yeah, no, I'm not going to say any names. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. There, there are YouTube rats, though. They, they try to strike and strike your channel and stuff like that but i'm so uh, dude i'm so tired of of the whole rat topic it's like 
It's so old already. School. It's so old so already. And, and I understand it totally from anybody who's lived that life, who has an issue with rats. I salute you. I respect you. I understand where you're coming from. But for me, somebody who didn't live that life, it's like nobody gives nobody other than who's lived that life gives a shit. Like, I don't, I don't, it makes no difference in my life, whether somebody ratted or not, if I'm not directly involved, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my thing though, is though, is that these guys though are claiming though, that, you know, rats, this and rat that you got a CEO who's in your, uh, who you have working for you. You have, uh, and do you just, you rat out everyone though, who does a little like thing and try to get their channel down and this and that. And it's just, and you're, did you telling everyone that you're from this huge mafia family? Like, it's just, come on, man. Come well, on. Here's you know what's what? crazy too. I would never do it, but the, you know what though? They, they pushed me to the limit. They pushed me because I, I waited. Yeah, I could tell. I, I could tell I you look Frank, pent up. You look like you need a few Frank, Snickers. <laughs> after I talked to Frank today, it was like, it was on. Like I said, it just all happens to be right at the same time that I guess it's going on though with other channels, but uh, that's how I, uh, God or karma works when you when you tell lies. Yep. Yep. And the crazy part too with the whole rat stuff is like so any, anybody that that I that I knew and I don't know many. I I know a few guys who were uh connected in one way or another. I was never a part of anything. But those guys there some of them even had family that were cops or they hung out we used to go in Staten Island, the, the 120th precinct in Staten Island. And there were guys that had gotten, they got fired off the force because they got connected to a case. So they lost their job as, as, a, as a police officer. And we'd go back and have lunch with the cops sometimes. And they'd all sit around and bullshit. So, I mean, this whole, I don't know, man, it's so intri intricate when it comes to that life and the relationships that are there. That the, the word rat is just thrown around so loosely and I don't know. It's just, it, it gets tiring, bro. It gets tiring. Well, it's just tiring. Listen, like you said it best, the people who lived it and they had to go and do their time because of all that and this or that, I get it. I mean, that's why Johnny wrote a book called Rat Bastards because I mean, you know, he's in there, you know, the, the, he was working for a huge rat. So guys who are directly involved isn't who we're talking about. I'm talking about these little fucking fanboys who are in the comment section who are just screaming it when they probably never got a parking ticket in their life. Well, <laughs> real quick, what's going on, Will? Man, just checking in with you guys. Uh, I was trying to get with Mike before he, he he went right by me on the way out, and I, I don't live far from the beach or ten. I just wanted to you know say hi and shake his hand for two minutes, but uh, maybe when he comes back through. Oh, really? Well, did he know? Because Mike's the type of Mike no. Solid. No, he didn't know. No, I know. He didn't know. I kind of thought of it after he's already passed me. And uh, I had some oh. stuff go down. I had a stuff go down, but um, he was my mail carrier. Um, he actually was a rat. So I don't take, I don't get my mail anymore because I can't take a rat. I can't have a rat delivering my mail. So I don't get, I don't get mail anymore. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of shit kind of people talk about they've never been through no, 90 percent of them have never been through nothing you know so uh, at this point i don't even i don't even get mad at that kind of shit anymore i just avoid it Nah, you know what though that's what you know i wasn't i was cool calm and collective until after today um uh what I after the issue that happened where people are saying they're me when they're not me and telling my friend that he's off the production. I mean, Was that another show? Figure, it's pretty easy to figure out who we're talking about. I mean, Was it another show? Uh, I can't say it though because then that's Was it way, MTR? Though. It wasn't MTR, huh? Read, I don't know. Read, read the read the It thumbnail. wasn't MTR, was read, it? Read the thumbnail. That's all I can gotcha. say. Yeah. Whatever the thumbnail that's said. said. But uh that's why, you know, because I'm still, even with that said, I should be out saying names and it's to that, but I'm still not. And, um, but whatever. Why? People are getting nervous. Because, because, no, but no, but he's the king. He's the king of calling everyone a rat, but he's the first one, though, to get your channel striked. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. You know? Oh, they're talking this, boom. And then sending letters cease and exist. Give me a break. Good Lord. 
I mean, that's as right as it gets. Yeah, no, exact corruption. I'm not sure who he's that's speaking that's of, but it's very true. As a former cop growing up around wise guys in NYC, it's impossible not to cross paths. I discussed this on my channel as well. Well, yeah, yeah. you're definitely going to cross paths. So wait, you you were a cop corruption? There we go. So, yeah, no shit. Uh huh. There we go. There's no, but listen, I'm listen. I'm a citizen. <laughs> I can interview whoever I want and talk to. I need a snicker. I, I, need, I need a snicker. <laughs> oh my god, snickers! They're getting, snickers. They're, getting nervous. they're getting nervous. You know why they're getting nervous? Because you you're growing the right way. Yep. Your your way. Well, and that's yeah. making some people nervous. They're not liking it because they're, you know, they're um, selfish narcissists. Just well, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's gonna be good, man. I, I mean, I see the say, everyone's mind though is so screwed up though, to the, to the fanboy point where someone could be on YouTube testifying, like doing all of that, and they're they get met. They'll be like, "He never testified. He never." I'm just being. You just tell them like. Here it is, and they could physically yeah. see it, but they'll still be like, "No, he's not." not like that no. stuff is just ridiculous to me. Like that, I don't. That's say, it, yeah. You can be a fan of him still, but I mean, the guy cooperated, and uh, well, it's simple yeah. that. people be, they get these weird obsessions. I think though, with these guys, and stockish in a way, and uh, no, no, no. yeah, just yeah. like just like when one of them when one of them pulled up on Sammy, and he got. <laughs> oh, love, dude, oh, I love that video. I can't tell you how many times I wa I've watched that. Yeah, he's a I dumb fuck. Like, it, it, it helps the channel. Have to go, Wait, do you guys hear? It's not just Sammy, it's the Gravano crime family. I want to tell all you here right now. I'm not, being, I'm not being a tough guy. Anyone ever, ever came near Definitely. my father and, and yep. got to look at the sun point ever, and ever tried anything? I'm going to do whatever yeah. I got to do to put you the fuck down. And that's I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get him out of the car. I, I, so I would have did. I would have. I would have tried to get him out of the car, because you yeah, know, te technically, that is your. That's your home. Your car is an extension of your home. So you want to get him out of the car, <laughs> but you right. touch yeah, my listen, mom, hey, yeah, but Chris, that's the material. If you hate him or love him or whatever, you got to look at the point of view of a son. Yep. If your father's being fucked with, I mean, it's a wrap. But you're yeah. going to call him the Gravano crime family now because the son did what even a normal citizen would do. You come near my father, I will freak. I I uh, I don't even want to get into that. But um, well, you know, my dad from okay. Canada, Evan. Yo, he hope all is well. Send a respect from the great white North California. Have a great show tonight. Nice here in Cali, my man. Cal, the great white North is Canada. You goof. <laughs> oh no, no, he said Canada. I mean, I'm born in California. Me and Marky Mark over no, he, here. He put North CA for me. Uh, that looks like Northern California. He means all right, Canada. You're He's you're from right. Canada. There you yeah, go. Where's, where's Gunsmoke? Oh, that's was undercover. <laughs> Napper, real good childhood friend of mine from here in East End. What's up, Napadonna? Thanks for being in the house. Tell your brother Mike I love him, and um, I'll murder him in golf. Murder him in golf. Yeah, yeah. Don't talk about him. That's mean, man. I, I wish I could. I can't play anymore, man. It sucks. No, I don't. I don't. I never. I. I. I I'm just breaking balls. I'm not a good golfer. Dude, dude I wasn't good either. But I love. I, I've. I found. I found it in my mid thirties. and Loved it because I couldn't play basketball and tennis and shit anymore. So I got into golf, and now with my my injuries, I can't do it anymore, man. It breaks my heart. Dude, I, I tried but, golf. Yeah, I, I, I understand couldn't. understand what you're saying, Chris. I got you. But go ahead. I, go ahead. I, I, could, I couldn't do golf. My my Chris. old man. My old man loves to golf, right? And so yeah, keep going. I'm just I'm grabbing a drink out of the cooler right across. So don't think. All I'm right. Leaving. So you know, just to have some father son time, I was like, well, screw it. I'll go yeah. get some golf clubs, and we'll go golfing. So. We get out on the course, and I forget, I don't know what hole we were on, but anyway, of course I sucked real bad, right? And there was yeah, people, so. there's people behind us, and they're they're waiting for me, yeah. and uh, they they started complaining or whatever. Yeah, and so I'm like, you know, fuck you, wait your turn. And my old yeah. man about to shit for it. He's like, no, there's golf etiquette. 
Yep. And I played it with a shoe lift on trying to get my my body like cuz I have 4 inch difference on in my legs now cuz of my I crushed my uh, my hip. So I had a, I had a, the lift on so I'm trying to hit it so I can hit it right down the middle. I did for a while but now I just can't I can't wear those shoes and play so I can't play anymore. It's what it is, yeah, man. No, listen, man. We used to do it though, like you know, we go to the driving ranges over at Rich's, yeah. and then we would. Uh, I went and played, and um, sometimes just only we have a we have a course here. It's shitty though. It's like I think it's only how many holes are there supposed to be? 19? 18. 18. 19 18. is the ball. <laughs> well, it's 19 is 18. The ball. So that's what there's nine here. Nine plus nine is 18. So okay, so there's only <laughs> nine holes though here. But I did go to Blue Ridge though before. But we would just like we would just start drinking and and um. You know what I mean? And doing it like for fun. I never really tried yeah, hard. Ninety percent are like you. I'm the other ten percent that wanna. I want to be on the PGA tour when I was out there playing. I sober, stone sober. I might take a pill for the pain, and if there if there's a one hitter, I might partake in that. But you live by Pine Valley, don't you? Wow, Pine Valley, far, yeah, that's not too far. That's like the cool one of the coolest ones in in the world. That, that's, Lubis that's just cool. left two guests alone. <laughs> Mike, I had to get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's listen, a community show. Community. I'm tell you guys everything, though. Listen, we we are so open, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? So um, communal, um, communal, not communal. That's a different you know, word. I'm looking like. for. We're very okay. um. We'll, we'll use communal, but we tell you guys every little knickknack because we, we like, I don't know, so we just don't have to do that at all and hide, you know? Yeah. And busy. Dude, I, I want to tip, I want to tip my hat to uh, Roro and Ruby because that moderator I, stuff is, they make it look easy. I, it's not easy, I don't think, but they make yeah. it look easy. Roro's great. Oh, did so, they help out so much? Yeah, it's incredible. Well, I got a crush on Roro, but hey, you know. It's the crush that can never happen. Uh, we have Row and OG Ruby. They're godsend. Oh, yeah. Absolutely godsend. What's up, Napper? That's when you tee it up and hit it back at him. <laughs> Scott could golf. He could, he could golf. He's good at it. But going back though, to our topic, though, guys, don't you just think, though, like, I mean, Pete, like, as, like, a content creator, this or that, like, I mean, what do you want to, like, have a little bit of uh, integrity and just think, like, try to be truthful and try and not trying to start like with all these other like people and this, I just don't know where it comes from. Absolutely. You know? Ab dude. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've, uh, I'm not going to mention any names again, but there was a, a creator who, who flat out said that, you know, to get traction, he was bashing, but you know, he does these bash videos on another channel and I get it. I mean, it's it's one of the it's one of the channel it's one of the channels where everybody's like, ah, that's a rat, that's a rat, that's a rat. And I understand yeah. that, but it's hard for me. It's just hard for me to have respect for that. It's like trying to get where you're coming from, but if you're saying you're doing that for, for the clicks, I don't. I just can't respect that, man. It's it just it's not in me to. Uh, I just look at that differently, you know. It's like you said, it, it's one thing if if you live that life and you're exactly. like when you and Mar when you and Marky Mark were talking about um, fanboys and you guys covered a bunch of shit. Like, dude, I haven't lived anywhere near where Marky Mark has lived, but I get where that dude's coming from, and I and I respect the, his point of view. I can understand that. That makes sense to me. If you're just a clickbait right. person, I, I I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not going to watch you because it's no. It's not entertainment for me. It's like I'm I'm smart enough to know the guy's a rat. But if I if and like most people that watch the channel, if you enjoy some of the content, 
I don't necessarily think that means, you know, oh, you're down with raps or, you know, dude, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a gangster. I enjoy some of the stories. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's coming though, though. Now, if it's coming though from people though, who act, who actually, I could get why they're mad. I mean, who were put away. By right. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. But we're just, we're clearly talking about these, these people who will start channels and just try to put down other people. And then they got people coming to their house and then you see them in an ambulance and they're like, come on, send me donations, send me donations. Like, what are you doing, man? And then they're doing recovery addiction shows. And then I, now for my addiction show, you guys will notice that when I'm dropping on Sunday, it's not even monetized. I'll never make money off of addiction or try to. And that's just... I just don't think it's right to try to make money off of other people's misery and agony that they went through. And it's just a known thing. It's also in the actual, if you, I don't do, I don't, I'm not like a big AA guy, but it's actually in the 12 traditions that, um, to, to profit on it. Now, if you work for like, you know, I worked for rehabs before that's different though, but I'll never, it's just weird, man. It's like what people are doing. I'm just screaming for not even views, but just for uh, donations. It's just like, look, I'm in, the, I'm in an ambulance to donate where they come to donate. <laughs> he had three people come. I'm not saying his name. He had three people come to his house and he got his ass kicked and he's in the hospital. You reap what you sow. You're going to talk shit. It's going to catch up to you one day. And and well, it's especially guys, anyone could be watching this. This is the internet. So if you get out there and you also say that you're something, you're going to find, they're going to find out if you are something or if you're nothing. So all I'm saying is don't pretend that you're a mobster. You're not a gangster for well, number one. I'm going back to like what I started the show with. Number one, you're not a gangster and you never were. Number huh. two, that's not even your real name. Number well, which, number three, um, well, you are having COs who work for you. You're supposedly this king. I hate rat guy, but yet what's that all about then? And I challenge any of them to come on the show at any time and speak to me. And that's that. But go on. Wait, your show has grown so naturally and steady. Great content and hard work goes a long way. I remember the apartment on the couch, 500 subs. No, this was, was my, yeah, the house up in Dallas, man. Uh, yeah. And then I got rid of that because... A lot of shit went on in that house and I had, I was engaged in all that bullshit and you just can't light a house on fire. So in my way, it was that was my way of like, just light that on fire, get out of that, change your whole environment. And um, I'm happy I did. I thought it would be the end of the world getting rid of it, but it is what it is. You really, you lit a house on fire? No. <laughs> 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 oh Listen. Listen, because I have two kids start a freaking uh, <laughs> apartment fence for fire. I, I've got them to do it. I was like 10. I got these two eight-year-olds to start a fire. And I was, and it almost took half the apartment. I almost did some real damage and got some people hurt. So, Jeez. yeah, that. No, it, so it was in the house. Lo Loomis lit a little, little Caesar's pizzeria on fire. <laughs> it was in the house. <laughs> no, I was got pizza pizza, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. We moved around all the time. So when so when I was new, you have to either fight or do something that scares them to where they won't f with it, right? So I tried to. I it wasn't. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I was just a kid, man. But I was never a gangster. But no. I knew some. I knew some, and I was in the dope game. So just. I mean, I had some really crazy shit happen to me. Some of it was bad luck, some of it was karma, and some of it was just my big mouth. Because um, I don't like to be told what to do, especially when it comes down. We have quick. a guy with a gun. Oh, in God, the, in well, I'm, I'm just caught, I, I'm sorry, I was just commenting on the comment there. I know, Scott. That's the funny thing, and I don't even tell. I don't. I don't even. I'm, I'm nothing. We didn't. We never did anything, Nap. But Scott's like one of my best friends who literally lived a block away and uh, grew up with me. And uh, we're, with the sky. We're I'm, gangsters, I'm, but like I'm, you know, we were around. Like you know, we got we acted like you know like real people. But instead of just shooting people, we'd fight. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it was. We weren't gangsters though. That's old school. That's old school. I, like, the, only reason, the only streets knowledge that I got though was obviously you know we were on the streets a lot. But then though, like when you're trying to get drugs, selling drugs, all that type yeah. of stuff, uh, yeah. you know. 
but no gangster organization ever thought I was a gangster, you know, at all. I was a thief, you know, and uh, uh, <laughs> deal. that's pretty much it. And uh, but, I'm not anymore. See, I wanted to be for a little bit. For when I, was, I, I wanted to be when I when I was when I was younger. I wanted to be, yeah. and um, so I know I know one real. I mean, I know one real serious dude who I met. I didn't meet him until. I was married, had kids, and the only reason I met him is because my old man, one of my old man's best friends, is also best friends with this guy, and that's how I met him. And um, and I'll just leave it at that. And, and that's that's the one wh where I would say real gangster. I I know now. When I was younger, there was a lot of people who were not even just. I don't even know if you would call them associates, Loomis. To be honest with you, you just. They were guys who knew associates or who knew people who were higher up and they were they were trying to make their way in so like here's here's my my story i, I wanted to tell you this a while back so okay. like i was hanging out you know with a couple of guys that wanted in right and so back in the day and i don't know i have no idea what it's like now but back in the day one of the big things that the mob controlled was the bread routes believe it or not so yeah. like if to deliver italian bread Okay, and it was it was next to impossible to get a bread route. Hmm. So one of the guys that I know who knew guys that were higher up, I think he's at, he actually got a bread route at the end of all this shit. But in the beginning, as he was trying to get in to earn his way up to a bread route, he was doing little little bullshit here, uh, bookmaking, collecting this and that. One of the things was fireworks, right? So. Chicky Bella snaps. <laughs> That's so, an insight thing with Scott. Go on though. So one of the things that that I that I did when I when I wanted to try and get in is I would go with him. He had a guy in Brooklyn who I don't know where they would get these fireworks, but dude, you'd go walk into a basement in Brooklyn and it would be packed with fireworks, right? And I had a van. And no what I didn't know at the time was see, nobody wanted to go from Staten Island to Brooklyn and go over the bridge with a truckload of fireworks because if you get busted on a bridge it's the tri-state authority actually owns the bridge so you get a hell of a charge if you get busted on the bridge well my dumb ass you know i i did that with him we got away with that and then one day i go over to his house we were going to do something and it was like a friggin movie loomis a lincoln town car pulls up these two goons get out of the get out of the car and they start beating the piss out of him and i mean hmm. and i went to go i went to go jump in to help and the, my friend told me mind your business and mind took your, his, i was just gonna tell you you gotta he mind told me to mind my yeah. business and he took his ass whooping Absolutely. and at that point like i i i reassessed <laughs> what that shit was all about you know like and i'm not afraid to fight and i'm not afraid to get my ass i would have got my ass kicked with him you know yeah. but at that point, I just thought, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not built like that. Like if I'm your friend, I just couldn't, I couldn't be that way. I, I could never imagine like if me and you grew up together and we get in that life and then somebody, because they've got some more authority than, than I do, tells me to do something to you. I just couldn't do it, dude. Like I'd be trying to scheme with you how to do something to them before they did something to you. You know what I mean? Like. I'm not built for that kind of treachery. And so at that point it was like, yeah, no, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to work, keep my, my nose to the grindstone, and then you know, then of course you get a wife and kids and all that shit is like, yeah, fuck all that. <laughs> you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly though. Smart. And smart brought on to this show too. I did plus like, you know, people that are trying to come on though right now. Um, then that though gives them credit though to strike though me for talking. I never mentioned your names or anything, but you I know you are watching now and um you have my number and you could come on the show at any time. And uh the guy, the guy who I was with who went to he gets more mad if you talk something bad about it. he's like obsessed with that uh host of the show, and uh it's just ridiculous. 
you didn't talk to hold on. You didn't talk to me, man, for freaking over a year. I messaged. I have the. I have the receipts. I messaged you. Hey, man, I owe you two hundred. Like, what's up? You never responded until you heard about the Buffalino project a year later, and then you started trying to get paperwork off of Frankie. You told Frankie, "Ooh, yeah, but what's up with his Whitey Bulger project? This and that." Then Frankie told me today that you you guys were telling him that he's off the production and all that BS, and he was like, he couldn't get in contact with me because what's going on with my father? So take oh. your fanboy shit somewhere else. Yeah. Tell him, baby. That's it. Thanks, bro. And you know, and I, you know what? I even told, I even told him anything that he asked me, I would even tell him, yeah, like, you know, Carmine Lamardozzi, yeah, he was a top echelon, though, for the blah, 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 this or that. And then they just, then he's like, I want my $200. Okay, buddy. You know, you've come a long way. You've come a long way, bro, from what, since I've known you six months. It takes a you lot for me to do this, and I don't like being negative, and I really don't want to be negative. And um, I just, but after though, what I heard though today, I was just like, "What? Are you kidding me?" And then he's like, "Dude, I talked to OG Mike and everything. Mike helped me out, and thanks, Mike." But um, it was, uh, yeah, it was just, it's kind of just weird type stuff, like you know, and uh, you reap what you sow. It's as simple as that. And I'm honest; I have nothing to hide. And uh, yeah. That's the, I mean, I, what are you going to say about me? You know, what, like, what could they say about me? You're an ex addict that works hard every day to stay that way. You're doing good. Yeah, I'm more I'm good. Every day, though. But you know what, though? R Ruby, do me a favor and uh, go in there and unblock um, the, the Chris one that you see. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've, I've had addiction problems. I had to leave Houston to save my own life. You know, yeah. and luckily I had family over here. And, you know, last month, five years ago, that was the fulcrum. So now I'm the fulcrum. So, you know, I mean, I'm here because yeah. I'm supposed to be here. And that's how I'm you got to look at it, man. I'm just trying to do my thing and help people and help whoever needs help. If they ask for it, I'm always there. I'm not trying to put other people down. I'm not going to just, you know, judge everyone when these people were never, ever even like. Yeah. Never had like, a face that like the people who like, faced it though, and actually I get their anger and I get why they're mad. But the other ones though, it's just it's just real weird to me. It's weird. I mean, I mean, think of my mother. My mother lost her her dad at nine. She had me, and her first time she ever had sex, she had me. She was a kind of wild for a while, not with her partners, just with her lifestyle. And then I was a perfect kid until I got out of, the, out of the Navy. Then I discovered drugs. So I, then I got in that game, got shot twice over it. The last time was over here, and I was right by my mom's. Drop the link, row. I was right by my mom's house. So I went to mom, and there was a hole about the size of a freaking nickel in my hand from that 40. And I told my mom, just give me a Band-Aid. I'm going to lay down, mom. <laughs> And she's like, no, you're not. You're going to the hospital, stupid. And uh, <laughs> so I put her through that. And my brother was in prison in, in Alaska. So, I mean, he OD'd in Florida. So, you know, my mother got put through a lot. And we're coming up on five years without her, man. I just miss her, man. I just lost my, my favorite cat, fucking Clyde Jr. He was like, he had the personality of a dog. He did, man. He had the brains of like an eleven-year-old person. That's it, why I, love was, dogs. I always say that they have more um, uh, personality if it come to you. But cats, though, that are like that. There's, I've seen a few. I like, I love them. It's only a few. Yeah, it's only a few, and they have to bond with you over something. Like he almost died when he was two, and then he. I didn't. I hated cats. I was allergic. I was, I lived by myself most of my life. You know, Cats girlfriend. You if you die in the house, like they'll immediately eat you. A dog, it'll be like last, last resort. I think yeah. they'll eventually yeah. eat you, but not the cats. Cats were weird. Look into them. Uh, you're right. You know, I, mean, I have. And, but you see, dogs will eat their <laughs> food immediately. I know, but dogs eat their, their food immediately too fast. You know that? But then cats yeah. just, they eat. They, they're your friends because they want to be your friends. I think dogs are more hardwired. They need friendships. Cats don't really need friendships. But who knows? I agree. Yeah, they're more self-efficient too. Yeah. 
Look, I just wanted to pop in. time and and uh, this and that. They could pass. You could just leave them a bunch of food, and you could still go away. Where instead of like boarding the dog or have someone watch your dog, cats are very more self sufficient. Absolutely, and and half ones we got here, we they're in and out cats anyway. I'm a My dog mom left all the way. I'm oh, I love guy. dogs. I love dogs. I do love them. I just can't have them right now. Look at uh, this too. The guy still didn't pay me two hundred dollars that and asked me for. Hey, you want me to put oh, up the freaking cool. text message? Hold on, stop, stop, stop that's for one second. You want me to? I already talked about this. I said that you lent me two hundred dollars to go out there, but you wanted to. But how come when I said, "Hey, I'm back, man," and I owe you money, what's up? Why did you never respond to that? But then all of a sudden, a year later, you're at, a year later, you come back and asking for it after all the BS. The guy still didn't pay. Dude, everyone here knows that I'm a good, solid person. So say whatever you want, and both of you can go fuck yourself and get off okay. my channel. Chris is all right. Strike it and send your whatever. Oh, do I still owe him two hundred dollars? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't pay him, and I'm not going to. <laughs> you should. You should get Chris on. He'll come on, won't he? I know who's he's his lackey, but he'll come on. Yeah, but I mean, and say and say what? Who? Who cares? It'll be good to watch. Dude, sometimes no, but listen. Sometimes though, he's like, I don't, I don't get him. He sounds like he's the greatest guy in the world. That's why I had him in my, my parents' house. I like, he's just. He's, I thought he was a great guy, and it oh, literally Chris, like broke my heart. Like, like literally, Chris, I was like, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll, I'll throw the text. The guy still Gorky. hasn't paid me. Okay. Okay. Gorky, this is Gorky we're talking about, huh? Right now. He's, no, yeah. You know what? Hey, Loomis, it, it goes back to what you always say, man. You don't know somebody until they've been tested. Or or you, or you stayed some time with them, spent time with them. That's yeah. the truth. Until they're yeah. tested, you really don't, don't know. And yeah. um, see what they're about. I, don't know. I have one guy left in my fucking whole world. One guy left. I'm still listening. I'm just getting this. Yeah. Oh, that's a what cool picture from Marty, man. My man, Marty. Thank you, Marty. Um, Hold on one second, guys. Let me just find something here. Take your time. It's your show. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Hold on one second. No, you guys don't can still talk, though, real quick. Yes, the boss. <laughs> Pete, what, what do you do, Pete? I'm a phone company person. I work for the phone company. Okay, cool, man. I almost did that when I was younger. I was into computers and stuff, and I don't know when the, the phone company, you know, turned all, all computer. It must have started, did that in phases, huh? Yeah, yeah. Anymore, the phone companies really aren't phone companies anymore. We're, we're more internet companies. But I started out with uh, New York Tell, hmm. and that was back in, like, 93. And then they became Bell Atlantic and then Verizon. And then I had, uh, after I had a family, I transferred out here to a, to a different company. Where, where are you at now? Iowa. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I've never been on the East Coast. or I've been all on the West Coast, uh, Southwest, and Southeast. Now I'm in Mississippi right in the water. Okay. I'm that's pretty, to Dude, it's pretty um, down there. Uh, where like Mississippi, yeah mississippi's pretty yeah, it is man down here um it's the longest man-made beach in the world 26 miles and they, they made it um a lot of gambling now and it's all legal sports gambling is legal no yeah, shit. Cannabis, cannabis is legal fuck mississippi's come a long way the last 10 years man wow. you'd be surprised you'd be surprised because I, I, yeah, I hated it when i moved here i hated it when i moved that does yeah, surprise me, dude. I, I I figured the South would still be real strict. No, nah, man. We uh, money money wins out and everything. They knew they 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 knew they were stopping a lot of money, especially with the sports gambling. Um, yeah, because they they haven't figured out the weed quite perfect yet. But um, yeah, it's it's correct. I'm I, I'm a, I bet on games. You know, I'm a sports uh guy. I bet on games a lot, pretty much every day. Um, it it so, blew my mind. Well, it blew my mind when New York legalized weed. That that tripped me out, yeah. man. Not me because I knew. I mean, New York's tied on certain things, but they they do a lot of shit California does as far as certain things that you wouldn't think. 
Yeah, well, you know, be, in my mind, I go man. back. I go back to the eighties and nineties, how New York was, and it was. <laughs> it was Hi. tough. They, they were. Uh, they were still pretty tough on yeah. shit back then. Dude, I lived in Oklahoma. My my uncle was like a five county judge, and um, just because of the law, he had to give someone with a joint caught in a joint, like between ten and twenty years in the seventies. Jeez, and it was just draconian back then. He seemed to enjoy it as he was, April yeah, April twenty twenty three. Me constantly. Okay. Look at, he all he always responds all with everything, but this now this last one here was. And then when he gets back from Boston, nothing, nothing at all. Look at these are all messages from what I after when I got from Boston, nothing until hold on until right here. That's last one was, well, that one was like me, like, you know, after I heard though, what happened. Um, now, is why, that you from tell, why, why you tell it Frankie, the mob king, it's infamous rats that my Bolger project didn't work out. He said, like, bashing me and you want our paperwork. I owe you $200 and you just disappeared on me, which is odd. Try doing the documentary six hours away from home on your own and let me know how it works out. I'm grateful for what happened with that project because it taught me right away to go about, oh, taught me how to go about doing things. I have the family. We have every document out there. You, I, whoever show on Russell was so wrong. All I'm asking is don't bash my name. I never did anything wrong to you. And Frankie and I are brothers. Thank you. And that, you know, that was just this or that. And then he finally texts back to a year later, Loomis, you're, you're going way overboard here. And I think you're overreacting. I saw your little interview you had with Frankie on a live, whatever, talking about Russ. I was very interested in that part said about Carmine Lamagazzi telling Castellano and Gambino nodding in approval that Russ was the head of everything, but I didn't quite understand what he was saying. He wasn't totally clear to me listening to you got alive, whatever. It's just blah, blah, blah. It's him now coming back because that's when the problem happened. We were doing this behind scenes, not on a show. Like, you know, I was like, what are you doing? Getting in contact with Frankie, trying to get paperwork. Look up yeah. your own paperwork. The guy owes yeah. him two hundred dollars. Like, dude, are you kidding me, dude? Yeah, you. I even said, "Come, you, did I not go tell you to come and get it? You didn't want to. I don't know why." <laughs> but if you think though that uh, you're going to convince though this audience anything different, uh, you're not. So well, some of this audience and that audience I mean, too. I owe you two hundred dollars. Yes, I owe him two hundred dollars. Everyone. Okay. Okay. So we got that out of the way. And, 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 and you know what though for the aggravation i taxed him and he's not getting anything <laughs> <laughs> hey man you know it can only be it sounds like you need to go to a rain and work it out loomis you contacted sure. me a year later yeah i contacted you a year later after you got in touch with frankie what are you talking about I messaged you after Boston probably 15 times like I just showed, and uh, you yeah. never responded to me until something was going on with Russ and all that. I oh, thought you were a great guy. You know, I was wrong, and uh, it's as simple as that. I mean, like, what, yeah. and then you and then you guys tell Frankie that he's off the production? Tell What is that about? That's what I'd like to know. What You aren't even connected to the production. That's what I want to know. So. And yeah. your little buddy isn't a gangster and mafia fucking guy and never was. So stop with that bullshit. Okay, go on. Interesting. What's on? Live, this is like live news, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna mind my business with this whole thing, Loomis. I don't I don't have a nickel in that dime, man. That's I, I don't know that dude. And I I know him a little bit. I've talked to him a couple times on the show on that show. No, I thought yeah. he was all right. No, but who knows? Nobody knows. Guy. Yeah, nobody knows nobody until you spend time or go through See, something. I don't know if it's coming from him or if if the other guy's trying like to have you do that or this or that. But everything Frankie told me was red. Frankie will tell you right to your face, Chris. Call Frankie right now and see what he says to you. So stop calling me, Chris, shithead. And also, too, <laughs> well, <Thank you>. also, <laughs> what you all you got to do the paperwork's out there. You could get the paperwork. Go get it. And I also taught, and I also, when we got in contact, ended up telling you about Carmine Lamardozzi and texting you that when we were texting back and forth. Mm. And then I said something about the host of the show, and you got all mad, and you're like, "I'm over this." And then you were like, "Venmo me my two hundred dollars." And then Jeff, just later, come on, Jeff. You know, 
He knows I'm not man shit, man. Talk live. Knows shit. I'm not man enough to talk live. I'm not man enough to talk live. You're a little bitch who wouldn't come here for your money because you were scared. He goes like this to me. He goes, we're not in high school anymore, what? and I'm not going to get in trouble. Like, he actually thought I was just going to start. Like, I had, come on, dude. Manning up. I told you to freaking Gank. come and meet me face to face. Here we go. Let's fucking do this. Yep. Well, I don't know who's right. No, that's the wrong one. Hold on, let me get it. Only the gods know who's wrong and who's right. Only the gods know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to um the dead space. I'm trying to put something in this dead space we got. It's okay. People know that I'm just grabbing the link. I trust you, brother. Uh, I just I I know I've talked to Chris a few times. He seems like a straight up dude too. So, you know, think about my perspective right now. But I believe yeah, you. But think of mine, though. You never know with you. I'm trying to explain to you though what's going on. I believe you. Yeah. You know I believe what I'm saying, you. No. But so, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on, though, because he's going to come on now because he said that I'm not man enough to talk to him face to face, which is hysterical. But uh, I'm out. I'm out. Thank you. I'm yeah. watch. I love you to death, and thank you so much, um, yep. Loomis. You know, weird people. What a world. <laughs> Pete, I love you to death, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so go ahead. Tell, tell him your part. Go ahead. And I'm don't not, ever tell me I'm not listen, mad enough, dude. I will meet listen. you anywhere and talk to you. Don't ever well, say that. I mean, you didn't want to drop the link. So listen, I'm not here for Jeff. I'm here. I'm for not you. in control of the links. My moderators are. I have a bunch of comments well, they were going saying on. You didn't drop the link. So I don't know. Or you didn't give them the link to drop or whatever. So, but Chris, I thought well, you were a great guy. I, I, let me, listen, you said all this you stuff this without house. allowing me to you respond. In this to house. Were you not? Yes, let me respond. I'm trying to, like, you, you had all night to say what you had to say. Just let me respond. Okay, number one, I'm not here for Jeff. I'm here for me because you brought me up, okay? I will I say said your name. It doesn't matter. It's Listen, people know who the fuck you're talking about. I'm sure it's, it's not hard to figure out, and you know that. You even said it yourself, okay? Nobody's going to strike your channel. Nobody's looking to strike your channel. And one thing I'm going to say about Jeff, he never said he was a fucking mobster, gangster, or any of that. He did say he had a family member that was in the mob which he will stand by. He never said all that shit. The whole fucking thing's blown out of proportion. It was really simple. He was helping the guy he was pissed at to, um, get him paperwork. That's all it was. It's just like when people would steal his content and he didn't like that. He would drop these shows. Then all of a sudden, a day later, all these other people would drop the same show. That guy was in contact with him regularly a lot because I know because I know Jeff. He was helping him out with his paperwork especially on one guy, Anthony Pergiano specifically. And the guy's not giving Jeff the credit for it. He's giving other people. And I'm not saying someone else didn't help that guy. But, you know, when you're doing a lot of work for a guy as a favor, as a friend, even if they weren't close friends, all he wanted, like, was, hey, you know, you're giving someone else credit for my work when I was behind the scenes helping you out. That's all that was about. But you realize that I'm not even talking about that issue. I know. I'm just telling that that's it. But because of that, people made a big deal about it because who the guy is. Obviously, everybody's going to trash him. No. That's it. Listen, okay. real quick. The timing may seem weird, but from what I heard today was the last straw, and that's why this show is happening, and it has nothing What's to do with Joey. Drop? What the hell? What are you talking but, about what you heard you today? You need to talk to Frankie. You call Frankie then and talk to him because I think you need to. Because you're lying. Because because what did you tell him about? What? I'm going to give you an opportunity. What did you tell him at all? Loomis. And what did you want from him? Loomis. Okay. I never. I hardly ever watch your show. Every now and then, you know, mob shit pops up on my YouTube because we're into the genre. I watch it. Okay. I saw something on with Russ. Okay. Yeah. It, he's interesting because we're he's from our neighborhood. I get I it. Found what, obviously. So I found what Frankie said to be interesting, but I didn't quite clearly understand what he was saying. He, he wasn't clear to me, but what he said was very interesting. I don't care about your show, your production. 
I'm not looking to steal your paperwork to give to other people to give to Jeff. None of that bull. He doesn't need anybody's paperwork. He does his own research. I mean, he hates people that steal his shit. None of that. Why, shit did, saying, well, why, yeah, but why does he make up stuff? Like, he doesn't make up stuff. Oh, Russell Buffalino best. told Frank Sheeran that he wishes he was the boss on tape on audio. Jeff, like, come on, Loomis, Loomis, you're friends with the family. If anybody is going to know, when you have a direct connection with the guy's family, obviously you're going to know stuff that's right and that's wrong. He doesn't have that connection. You know, he does the best he can with his research. He says, I don't get everything right. I might get shit wrong. It's, it is what it is. But, I like you know, that. that's I know the name of our documentary. So. <laughs> Well, Listen, but I will I, tell I, you I this. Just, this isn't me being. This isn't me turning like into a soft whatever. I do have to give Chris respect though because he came on here showing his face and everything and didn't put up an avatar. So I just want to tell you, I respect you as a man. though, coming on. Well, thank you. I I always show. Him. I, I probably won't even know how to put an avatar up if I wanted to. Anyways, sometimes the shit well, will pop I'm up. Just saying no. though, a lot of people don't, right. and I'll respect right. you on but that. Listen, much. So as far as that shit, but like I said, I'm just trying to say that real quick. But I know I said I was going, but I'm just trying to squirt out of way. The guy's not perfect. He doesn't fucking know. Um, he, he's not going to get everything right. It's that simple. All it wasn't about attention from the other guy or any of that. All it was was simple credibility. I'm doing all this work. You're contacting me all the time. I'm the one giving you all this paperwork on this one rat. And and all that stuff about A light was from 10 years ago. And all those guys knew that down there. All of a sudden now, because he stood his ground against the guy, now now it's a big deal. But 10 years ago, it wasn't. Whatever. As far as the stuff with Frankie, only reason I contacted him, yeah, I asked for the paper. I didn't ask him. I, I didn't care if he sent it to me, whatever. I didn't Why didn't you contact me? You can call me. Why didn't you contact me? Because he's the one that had, he was the one telling the story. It was his story. It was his work. So I was just trying to understand what he was saying. That's how, that's all it was. Like I, I I still find it very interesting that that went down. That Russ was actually the head of the commission at one point. I mean, if that's all true, I mean I I've never heard that in my life of Carbon Library where Gambino and Casola saying yeah he was the head of the commission. I've never heard that. Obviously, very powerful, very respected. So I found it interesting. That's all it was. That's all it yeah. was. I'm not looking to steal your, your fucking show, your production. I'm not looking to get his paperwork and do something with it. All I was asking him is, can you clarify what you were saying? I didn't quite understand you or point me in the right direction or, or like, I just want to see what you read just to see where this came from. That's all it was. That's it. Okay. That's it. As far as that shit with Springfield, listen, obviously I'm a bigger guy. I had to sleep on a fucking futon that was the size of, for a oh, little no, fucking no 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 dude that's train. fine that you left that's fine that you left but i texted you and, and i left I you home. no and i contacted you i told you listen i gotta leave i'm going i can't i couldn't sleep oh here. yeah no no you place. did that no listen to me you absolutely said that you know but you, didn't tell, you don't tell that part man you didn't tell that part every time i think this is done with you something else i said happened. that you just left on your own and i tried contacting you and you never ever got back in contact with me there's 15 messages after you left boston from me there when was, i got back home and then now you want your money Listen, and now you listen, want your money. I listen. I will admit, you you contacted me once or twice. It wasn't fifteen <laughs> times. Now I got to prove you wrong. Oh no! Well, okay, listen. So lately, since his Frankie Whoa, stuff, there's a lot of messages. Last year. Boom! She contacted me once or twice. That's that's all it was. But anyways, it's, it's it's, and that was it. Okay. The reason shit got bad with us, you you get fired. It's, it up was nine. Time. It was nine times. But go on. You can look at I, your I, own phone. All right, I, I don't have shit saved like that. But anyways, the, the the reason you get upset real easy jumping the conclusion. You're a bit of a fireball yourself, okay? When I talk, and listen, Frankie can say what he wants. He probably tells you one thing, tell, tells me something, because I did talk to him quite a bit. He goes both ways a little bit. You know, he, he's just trying to be cool with both of us. That's what it seems. It is what it is, whatever, okay? I don't know the guy as well as you, all right? But... You're the one who contacted me all fired up, ripping into that Frankie about me. Like I'm trying to steal your paperwork, Jeff, this, Jeff, that, fuck him. He's not a mobster. He doesn't, he gets this wrong. Like you were bad mouthing me to him first. So when no, somebody bad mouths no. me, he I'm going to call me and told me that you bad mouthed me about the Bolger project. What are you talking about? He's like, oh, watch yourself with Loomis. That's what I was told. 
he okay if he, he may have contacted you first but what i'm saying is when i first spoke to that guy all right it wasn't about bad mouthing you i i didn't i hardly ever mentioned i said yeah i know who he is i i, I, went, I, I believe that's what it was and when i see you you take things so the wrong way when i asked him i said what happened with the bulger project that's what that wasn't asking you saying you couldn't do it ha ha you never got it done it was none of that it was just a sincere simple question i don't keep up with you i said what happened with the bulger project since he was talking to you that's all it was and then but you took that as me trashing you you're not getting it done all of that shit. That's all it was. Well, that's how, because cause that's what he said to me. Though he said the way you were saying it to him, he goes, he was like trying to say, "Watch out, like for for him, like for like me and like you were saying." Well, like, listen, oh. after you re reply to me and you're all fired up and you're, I'm mean, listen, you were bad mouthing me a little bit. You got to admit, come on, you thought yeah. when you're thinking you're gonna steal. Okay, so when I hear that and I never did anything wrong to you on that initial phone call and you're jumping all these conclusions about stealing. No, no, no. But Could that's I when I part? fired back. Okay. I'm just saying, I wasn't looking to fight with you. I wasn't looking to steal your show. I wasn't looking to trash you. You I had a guy on. Call. Says, I got, listen, before me, before I even responded to you, listen, before I even reached out to you, I got a phone call saying, who is Chris Gordy? And I said, oh, I go, you have, you talk to him? I go, I went to, you know, I, I didn't say anything bad about you at all. He was like, yeah, dude. He was like, but he, he started those asking for paperwork. And then he said, he was like, he asked me about the Bulger project and he put it in a way like, oh, working with Loomis, though, it's not going to, what do you call it, uh, pan out, like, you know, because of the Bulger project. He goes, he definitely didn't sound like someone who was cool with the Loomis. And he was saying like, you know, that's what that all stemmed from. I didn't just go nuts. He contacted me and told me this. Okay, and but that's, that's when well, I came okay. after well, you then, listen, because I even been texting you nine times and then now you want your money. Loomis. Where were you when that you whole start, year? Listen, when you started texting me a year later because of that, that's fine. Whatever, because Frankie called you, whatever. When you start texting me a year later, going nuts, making a big deal, all these accusations. Yeah, I said, dude, like, here, well, why don't you just pay me my money then? Yeah. I, I, what I, say? I said, come, I said, come, I said, come here and I'll give you the money. Loomis, I fucking work over, I work a whole shitload. All you have to dude, do you is live right by me. me. PayPal me, whatever. What did you say though? What did you say when I what did you say when I told you to come here for the money? What did I what did you say when I told then, you to come then here? You told, I said, well, Answer and then my you question. Told, I didn't hear what you said. I said, what did you say when I told you to come to Moore's for the money? Loomis, I this am isn't high school. I'm not getting in trouble. That's what you said. Yeah. I'm over an hour away, Loomis, half the time I talk to you. I don't even stay in the area half the time because I got I, I got to work a whole shitload of overtime because we're down people. But you and made it sound like I was going to try to do something to you. I'm not getting into trouble. Like you thought I was going to like, what, hurt you or try to hurt I you? Don't, like I don't no, understand. I, listen, I don't know what you're doing, not doing. All I'm saying is I'm not in the area like you think I am. So I simply said, Venmo me or PayPal me. Then another time when I thought this was done, and I and I and I'm for the record horribly sorry to hear about your your father because that's and, and I don't know if that's something I shouldn't bring up, but your family. No, no, no. I, I actually, I, I go ahead. I appreciate that. But but no, your 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 family's good people. And your dad's a good person. But um, you know, I thought we we're done with that. Then you said, you said, I I said, listen, with all the back and forth, I said, listen, I don't have a lot of time. I said, I'll call you later on when I could. I said that night. Then I texted you that. I said, listen, I got home. I just work from 7 a.m. I don't get home. I work over an hour. Yeah, and your son got in the accident. I know. Yeah. But then I did try to call you again once or twice. You didn't pick up. It, You know, whatever. But, I mean, this whole thing is blowing the fuck out of proportion. So, I'm not. If you think I did something wrong to you, I apologize. But I didn't do anything wrong to you. I wasn't. Now, did I trash you to Frankie after you're ripping into me about shit with the text and jumping conclusions? Yeah, I'm going to defend myself. Yeah, when somebody comes at me, I'm going to go back at them. That's all it was, man. That's all it was. You got all upset. You got to try and steal your paperwork, all that shit with the initial phone call to Frankie when all it was was curiosity. That's all it was. I, I, about his story, I know, but just for the record, all the all the paperwork is just you could find the paperwork yourself, obviously, easily. Well, I don't but, know where the fuck he got it. I don't know where. You know what I mean? He's yeah. You know, I mean, 
whatever. But so listen, buddy, I had to add, I'm, but when I'm hearing though, like, you know, constantly that we did, what we, I guess what we need to do is have a three way with Frankie one time and settle this. Are you willing to do that? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't care. I mean, like I said, I don't always have a lot of time, but you want to do that? That's fine. But I mean, why don't we, let's just fucking squash it already. This back and forth shit, you know, everybody's coming out of the woodwork now about Jeff. This shit with Jeff has been known and been out there from fucking 10 years back. But all of a sudden, because this big name guy where everybody follows, they're the fanboys that want to lump on and follow him and out, whatever. It is what it is. I mean, it, it's so ridiculous, but whatever. But that's all I wanted to say. If you want to talk to me, I appreciate you letting me on. That's all I wanted to say to square things away. I couldn't sleep on that fucking futon at that guy's house. They think, you know, I'm a bigger guy. That that thing was like fucking where the little Asian sleep in the fucking dresser drawer. Yeah, I thought it was, was like I the, fucking, the thing was like, you know, it, 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 it was like three feet, not even two feet wide. I, I tried. I tried. I couldn't do it. My back was killing. So I fucking went and got a hotel room. That's all it was. But anyways. I say, watch. man, though, that you defend though somebody do too much though. That isn't though the greatest person and honest person. I'm being honest. I think you are a good person deep down. I do. I I do. I don't want to go here with with this about him because I everybody likes. I don't even know what this fine. means though. But ask him why Loman files bogus copyright claims. No, you are watching Loman. You mentally. Oh, that, well, this. <laughs> See, that's that, that's the childish shit that I'm talking about. Am no, I am I, I mentally do I sound mentally ill talking right now? That's the childish shit right there. Bogus copyright claims. What the fuck's a bogus it, when when people steal his do you know how many people like he would do work and then do a show on something? And then literally the next day, two, three, at least two usually, content creators would then go do the exact same show he did. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Like people will look at this and then they'll put your show up here with me. You know what I mean? It, it, it's they're it, it's they're childish. It's fucking stupid. Um, as far as Jeff and me defending him, I started defending him because how I knew him right out of the gate. I had some lunatic screaming my name over his show like seven eight years ago. When I didn't know Jeff, I didn't know anybody or anything to do with this genre, okay? I was in, like, you know, someone, I, I forget where it was. I think I was in New York or something. Somebody mentioned about, he. there's two good mob shows to watch. Blood Letters of Dead Men, Mob Talk Radio. They're the only ones that really get things pretty accurate. Oh, okay, cool. I go watch this guy's show. This is what the, these people do, how ridiculous they are. J just to answer your question, I'm not trying to be long-winded, okay? I go watch the guy's show on his show. This is when he was on YouTube. Now he's on a paid platform on his show to, if you wanted to ask him a question, he does a, 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 a question, a question and answer segment. You had to ask him a question on Facebook. He would go on Facebook, Bob talk radio, Q and a and go. That's where you'd ask a question. I didn't have a Facebook account at the time. It was like eight, seven, eight years ago. I don't know. Like I would didn't give a fuck about social media. So I, I didn't have a, a Facebook account. So I created a Facebook account since I was listening to the show and I wanted to ask him a few questions. The very first time I asked this guy a question, all right, I get home from work. This is when I was working in the area where your brother works now. And I'm literally, it's like, I don't know, six o'clock, six thirty. I'm like half asleep after work, eating dinner, kind of listening to his show. And he goes, I'm going to call this one hater to show you how crazy these people are and how much they lie. So he calls this fucking guy and picture this. I never spoke to Jeff in my life at the time. Don't know anybody. And he goes, what's your problem? First of all, the guy answers the phone like a little girl hello, hello, to disguise his voice. Then he goes, what's your problem? He goes, oh, nothing. I don't have a problem. He goes, you, I don't, I don't like you. He's like, what's your reasoning for doing this? He goes, oh, I don't have any reason. And he goes, and the guy started scre screaming, Chris Gorky, who's Chris Gorky? You're fucking Chris Gorky. 
So picture this. Picture you never watched the show in your life. You don't know anybody from anybody. And you're sitting there laying there. And you hear your name being screamed over a show by some lunatic you don't even fucking know. <laughs> That's what happened. So what ended up becoming of that was this guy thought that I was, that Jeff was making fake Facebook profiles, asking himself questions, using other people's names, just creating names, making fake accounts to try to boost the show. That's all it was. So obviously right out of the gate, I see the guy, obviously the guy's lying. I'm, not, I'm a real person. And, and that guy still, he still says this shit that he makes fake Facebook accounts. So when you hear people right out of the gate, and that's how I got in contact with Jeff in the first place. Okay. He calls me up or I messaged him. I said, listen, what's up with this lunatic screaming my name? I said, I know you don't know me, but obviously I'm a real person. I'm not that guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry, man, that you had to go through that. He goes, this is just how people are. So that is how the whole thing started with me getting to know Jeff. Then I, you know, listen to his show, subscribe to his show, you know, exchange emails about like different things. That's all it was, you know, and then, you know, and then I went on his show a few times here and there. That, that's, that's it. But, you know, I, it, it's. I know, but, but like he, he put this on him. He, he really did, though, put this on himself. All he does is bash rats. The paperwork's out there. Jeff told on people multiple times he's a rat. Um, so what do you got? Then the question is that him and his partner though got caught up though with a robbery and Jeff, I don't, you probably do even know about that. I, I knew, I heard something about it. Like someone, like, like I said, this isn't old news. Like this was put out. So then why does he call everyone else a rat? From what he says, he never ratted. He said people were telling on him. He, 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 he made up a story lying because he, he was being pressed. He was in the box. He made up a story lying to get out of the box to then go, you know, take care of what he had to take care of. But no one went. He said nobody went to prison over it. He never testified. Or he cooperated. That, 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 huh? that Michael Francis excuse. I never read it because no one went to prison. What are you, the judge? Well, he did go you know to prison. I mean? People, Michael Francis did 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 send people. His testimony did lead people going to prison. But I'm Norby saying, Wal though, Nor Nor Norby Walters went to prison over Michael Francis. Tony Salerno's brother, Fat Tony Salerno's brother, Cyrano Salerno, if that's how you say it, he testified against him, which led him. So that's all it was. I don't know. I don't know the whole story. Like everything else, there's two sides of the story. He says, "Well, you're not him. I'll give you that benefit. You're not him, and you're yeah. just speaking on that." But my point is, he screams rat every day. He won't have this. He won't have that. But he cooperated. It doesn't make sense. Come on. He didn't cooperate. Though. Okay, he Chris. Listen, didn't... me and you. Listen real quick, because I let you talk for a while, and respectively, right. I kept my mouth shut. Did I not? Yeah. And yeah. you know, I did. I'm trying to be professional, and I am being professional, I believe. All right. You are. It's My fine. whole point, though, is if me and you tomorrow plan to do something like, you know, let's say a robbery, hypothetical, we're just making this up, and we get caught, you have a better lawyer than me. I end up, though, testifying, though, on you, saying that you were all involved to save my number. Listen, but my testimony doesn't get you locked up or whatever. I'm still a rat. For, do you listen, get that knowledge? I, uh, I don't know. He, from what why, he Why can't you just say yes, that that's cooperating? Listen, I'm not saying it wasn't. All I'm saying is he, he, what he said was he lied is what he said. The cooperation part was him lying, giving them a false story that didn't like just to get out to take care of the guys that were ratting against him. There are people that, the people supposedly that he did this with, they're the ones that ratted him out. Okay. They told on him. Okay. Now does that make it right for him to go back? No, but I'm just telling you the way he explained it. Okay. People were ratting him out. He was in the box. He made up a story of lies pointing the cops in the wrong direction for things, just bullshitting them to get out. And then he took care of what he had to take care of. His lawyer came to him. Okay. What the fuck happened? Nothing. You could stood. That's oh, I, I didn't know what the hell. All right. So his, his lawyer came to him in that trial from what he says. 
and said, you need to testify. You should probably testify against these guys. He said, no way. I'm not. I'm not. So if, if you're going to rat, wouldn't you just be a full rat and go and testify again? This is what he said. He just made up a story to point the cops in the wrong direction. He sat on one witness, didn't even let him come testify. And that was it. Okay, I know, but I'm yeah, not the only reason why we're saying this. What he heard, what what okay, he, how let, he let me it. let me let me just get a couple of words in. The only reason why I'm saying this is because he bashes every single. I hate rats. I hate that, yeah, and I, I just don't. I don't think he has no credibility to talk about like that after what he did. He doesn't no credibility to talk about like rats. And, and and shit listen, like that. I that's I I get it. I mean, if that's people's opinion, it's it's his opinion. Like I said, it is what it is. Yeah, and it, but but the thing is that I'm saying is like this stuff is not new information. This stuff has been out there for a long time now. But all of a sudden yeah, now, I know, I've ever on someone channel. and I park this channel and I start bashing rats. That's like kind of sick. I don't understand. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm talking to you. Never I'm not talking me. about you. Uh, Quite honestly, Chris, I think you're a gentleman. I don't think that. I think though that you are. Just too much on that dude's side for whatever reason, no matter what. Even if you see it, the paper that he did, whatever, you'll still be like, yeah, but. but, listen, but. I don't agree with everything. Like, we've had our differences in, in the past. You know, I only met the guy twice in person. We've had our differences in the past. You know, I'm not happy about certain things that went down, like with him and I that I'm not going to get into. But I'm just saying right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Do you know, look at how many people on here for the longest time said he didn't know that guy in Philly. He didn't know Joe. He didn't know anybody. He didn't know. I mean, that was the story for the longest time. And then, you know, obviously he did know. Him. Okay. Yeah. Now, right. Dude, that's just by mailing him stuff while he's away and just trying to help him out a little bit. He's acting like he's great friends. Dude, he's like, look, Joey, you texted me and blah, blah, blah. He never, friend. ever said, but that's the thing, man. This is what people blow out of proportion. He never said he was close friends with the guy. He is close friends with a few other guys down there that are pretty higher up on the totem pole, if that's what you want to say. But he never, ever said he was good. Did he say he knows them? Yes. Did he say they had a friendship of some kind? Yes. But he also went out of his way and said, listen, I never said I was good friends with the guy. I mean, that I'm that close with him. I never said anything like that. You know, he he, he went, but but people, but because people want to pile on him, they, all, they only want to pick and choose what they want to hear to use against them. That's, that's all what, it is. That's, well, that's what it seems like in this genre. What I, the reason why I started the show is because it doesn't seem like people want to cover history. They just want to cover his story and change narratives. And that's why well, this channel will never blow time. up. Listen, like, look at all this these people let, me, let me finish this. I, I do it. I let you talk, please. This channel will never, ever stoop down for views, stoop down to try to be cool with Michael Francesi and all of them. And I'm, I know he did. I'm just telling you about this channel. Yeah, I'm we just try to tell the truth. And the truth, you're, you're like, I just, I hate when people make shit up. It, I just don't understand that. And then you're going to bash people. Story. You're going to bash rats when you cooperate. It, it doesn't make sense. Well, I said what I said. On no, no, no. What you said, though, it was legit. Listen, listen. I got a lot of respect for you right now, man. You, you're on here. You're talking. We're talking this out. You got to remember, you seem to get real flustered when I say something negative about Jeff, and it's not even about you. No, Why? I don't. It's not even I, negative. I'm just speaking fact. I don't get flustered about saying something negative about Jeff. I I just think too many people over exaggerate and don't really know the full story. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, being close friends with the guy. That's an example. He 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 said he wasn't close friends with the guy. I mean, he said that many times. Do I know the guy? I mean, they, they actually said the same thing. As far as knowing each other, they said the same thing. In all these years, all he doesn't know, but he, he knew the guy. He helped him out. That was it. Okay, that was it. Did he see him around at times? Probably when he was down there with other people. Yes, that was it. Wasn't close friends with him. None no, of and even me, I'm going to be honest with you. The only close friend I have is John, really, that's in this genre, and Joe Buffalino, the Buffalino family. Yeah. Um, just because I went, though, and interviewed someone doesn't make me friends. Yeah, well, 
yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I don't know. But, you know, like you got these people in here now. He loaning through a tantrum. He's this, he's that. I mean, you know, it's funny because there's people out there, like obviously you're every, these are the real fanboys that like pile on. He stood his ground. You don't think him saying that stuff when he, he made his show lashing out, you don't think he knew that other guy would have a response and say, I mean, there's a guy that also called Sonny Francis a rat. I mean, you don't think he knew that the guy stood up for himself because he thought he was wronged. That's it's that simple. And what's funny is this is no different but than, but he's a fanboy. Like, Oh, Joey didn't give me the credit. Joey didn't give me the not, credit. Loomis, don't you he's understand what I'm saying? Boy, come on. That's not, that's not, no, he Jeff's not a fan. He doesn't look at those guys like it, not it like how not, no, he's not. Loomis, you're not understanding. If somebody was contacting you, like, a lot, because you do all this research, you spend money, get all this paperwork, Freedom of Information Act, 302s, you know the deal, okay? And somebody's contacting you for, like, months here and there, for weeks, and you're, I mean, putting all this work together for the guy, you're getting, you know, it, highlight this stuff, make sure it's easy for me to read, highlight the key points. And you're doing putting all that work in, okay, because you're good at what you do. And you help the guy out with what you need to help out. And then the guy goes on his show and gives credit to somebody. And I'm not saying the other person didn't help him, but gives credit to somebody else when you did the bulk of the work. You're you're that's not a fanboy. That's standing up for yourself and saying, OK, I, I get that, though. But that, I mean, that's all I'm saying. The, yeah. Um, but then he has to though, understand, though, though, that and, you know, that not Joey's fan, he's, he's Joey's just going to tell it like it is. He doesn't give a shit, you know, and uh, God, that was a dumb move, though, I would just say, though, personally. But I was if that's the truth that he stuck up for himself. Yeah. But I just can't get over the fact that he calls everyone a rat. He calls everyone a rat. And he's well. One. Listen, you, you can deal with that with him, whatever, like I said. But I'm just saying that stuff with the other guy. All it was was him, again, the guy. And, and let's be, and, and if this wasn't, if he, if this wasn't Joey who he was, and this was just some average guy out there, nobody would have this big of a deal. Sure, he would still have his typical haters. I mean, you got like retard, like people in this chat now saying, I'm a fan. What am I a fanboy of? What? Because I know the guy. Like I, I know the like truth. A, you I, seem like I know like, the truth on Jeff's side more than most. You people. seem like his apologist. No, I'm just listen. I'm telling you, the guy's not perfect. He's not. I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong. I'm not saying he didn't overreact. I'm not saying like you know he maybe made too much of a big deal about it. I told him. I said, well, he got pissed off because when he was in his live, he goes, somebody asked about you. Go, who? Who the fuck's that? Oh yeah, yeah. I knew him. Helped me out in my case. He's okay. What? Like, he just seemed rubbed the wrong way. I told him, listen, it wasn't that bad. Don't make a big deal about it, okay? I'm not saying everything about him was right. I'm not saying he handled the whole situation right. I'm just telling it like it is, just like the other. That, that's all I'm doing. It's that simple. But because everybody wants to lump in with the other guy because he's a big-name guy, you know, now you have all these people on your track fucking, like, making a big deal for you. It's ridiculous. Yeah, well, Chris, no, you just said I sound like a fanboy. So th don't don't give me that back and forth shit. I could care less. Are you like, telling me? Like, back I'm not making yeah. excuses for the fucking guy. I know what happened. I'm just sharing information of what happened. I'm sitting here telling you guys he overreacted. He didn't need to make that big of a deal about it. Okay. But there was another side to it that you guys don't want to hear because you want to be up the other guy's ass. That's all it is. That's all it fucking is. You're sitting not there doing me. all kinds you're of things. You're not telling me this. I'm up nobody's ass. I don't. I don't not, put anyone on a pedestal. No, 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 not 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 you. The chat, like, just reading some of these ridiculous comments in the fucking chat. It's it's it, it's so fucking blown out of proportion. But whatever. You know, it, it's it, it, there. There's a guy out there putting videos out all the time about him. But yet, when Jeff would put a video out about people stealing his content. This same person would be defending Jeff. But now that it's a big name guy that Jeff stood up against, 
oh, well, now we got to side with that guy instead. And just, it's, it's just so fucking no, ridiculous. No, this has nothing to do with Joey Berlino at all, what, what I'm talking about today. I, I know. I'm just going, no, and, and that's another thing. That's not, I'm not that Marky Mark. So I'm not going to talk about that. And yeah, that, that's another incorrection. Well, you're not. Uh, I don't no, think dude, that there's a problem with that. I'm a normal citizen. I'm told just saying you that in the text, but you you didn't. You're you know. I mean, I guess you didn't read it through, but whatever. Yeah, but here's I, the thing. Listen, though. I I was for a brief period, but listen, I go to work in street clothes. That's all I'm going to say. Listen, here's all I'm going to say to you though. Too, there's no. I I okay. That's what you did. You're not a gangster, so I have no problem though with that. But but with Jeff's statement though, he's like, I would never have police this on that. That's all I'm talking. The guy buries himself, Chris. And I'm gonna be honest with you. When we first met up, I was like, this dude's awesome. I wanted to like hopefully do something with you. And um, but I know that you're so far up Jeff's ass, I just don't get it. Man, I I don't know how much to explain this. It's just I knew the truth, like I said, I know a lot of what people say and exaggerate. So again, I, I just try to just set the record straight a little bit. It doesn't matter. Listen, your your fanboys, some of the people in the chat, other people, they're just gonna take it, run about it, make their little videos. Okay, it is what it is. That's no, you not, know. Well, I wanted to make that clear though that this is, episode has nothing though to do with Joey No Berlino. It has to do with yeah, what, and, we've and, going, I mean, what we've been going through for the past month. And you know this has nothing to do though. We're not doing this because of what Joey's doing, because we've been deal me, you, and Frankie been talking for the past like two months with this bullshit. And um, so it's not like, oh, let me do an episode now because uh since he said that, no, I got a phone call today and I was just like, All right, fucking that's you know, like doing. people, this guy is saying there, don't you see the yes, I see the the hypocrisy, okay? That's not not prison guard, man. You guys keep saying I'm prison guard. Fucking stupid. I go to street work in street clothes. Do prison guards go to work in street clothes? No. Holy. No, you just said that you used to be and you're not now. You just said it. That's yes, whatever. very temporarily. And then I got another position. It's not even really. It's connected to that, but it's not even part of that, really. It's it's really a totally different thing. It's more of an, I, I, like, I'm just in, I'm like. Whatever, I don't have to explain myself anymore with my personal. Well, shit. No, you don't. You know, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, but but when I'm hey, listen, I think you're missing the point though. Here, I really don't think I have like a pride. Like, I, after speaking with you now, it's not with you, but you just seem to be in a pot. You do, man. Any you, you I, I you, understand I, it's we're going in circles about this. Look, I know we're going I'm in sure. circles though, man, but you can't answer the question. The, the, the he cooperated. So why is he what bashing is, every he, cooperator? I, he's not a mafia guy, he's not a gangster. Man. I would smoke that dude in one second. He's nothing. You would nothing. have to listen, ask him that. You want to message him and ask him that? Message him and ask him that. I answered the question. I can't answer things for him. I'm not apologizing for him. When you asked me about that, I told you the story as how I know it. Could there be two sides to every story? Three sides? Sure. There usually is. Okay. And as we know, the truth sometimes we're in the middle. Okay. I can't, I'm not him to where I could answer that. All I'm saying he's, is, he's welcome to come on. All I said was that from what this was covered on, on Angel Show, too. I don't all watch I, Angel. I don't watch, I you know, think I watch these shows? Been, I have to, I, my, my, you know what's yeah, going on I, with me. I, 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 and working I get and all that but, stuff. I don't have time to watch all these shows. This was a but, personal thing between us. But the Joey what Marino I'm, thing, whatever, you know, that's them. No, I understand. It's just I got like some people in the chat with their stupid shit. But no, what I'm don't saying, read. what I'm saying, but you are asking me about him as far as the, the stuff with the rats. Well, all no, doing yeah, is, he, he should not be calling people rats. That's all. Okay, he, that's he's, fine. Lewis, that, he's that's making fine. a platform. I, I'm just, I can't answer that question. I understand. That you, I, I did understand. the best of my ability to explain what he said. What he's talking, the, the the whole thing with whatever he did, and I'm not saying the time matters, but this was like 20, it was like 20 some years ago. Okay, that's number one. It's like 25 years ago. People ratted on him. He was in the box. He told he 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 told cop he just made shit up to the cops, pointed them in a different direction so he could get out. His lawyer went to him and said, will you testify against these guys? He said, no way. 
That's the best I can answer. He made shit up, pointed the cops in the wrong direction. That's what he said. I'm not being an apologist. All I'm doing is relaying the information of how he explained it. And, okay, and he explained but, this a long time. Let me just say this about you. He won't come on, Loomis, because he can't handle the truth or questions. Well, guys, I think, though, and I'm not trying to be whatever, but Chris did, though, come on. And he's show, and he's shown his face. So Why? With him, do you, like, do you, I respect do you, like, that. Do you know do you how much you, this you let me finish? Me? You never let me finish. Sorry, I let you finish all the time. I apologize. Usually I'm the one cutting off people. Jesus. My point is, <laughs> why are you getting so mad by that comment? That has nothing to do with you. It's Jeff. No, it's other comments. Because there's people oh. in here saying stupid shit, but whatever. I think it's just oh. the redundancy. You know what I mean? It's just like, holy fuck. It's, it's, it's old news. Well, you, know? you and Frankie, though, need to settle this. And uh, well, we will. And um, like I said, this has nothing to do with Joey Berlino. It has to do with the, you know, what it has to do with. And yes, I did though start though, you know, saying stuff though like about Jeff when I found out the guy's cooperating but it's just bashing other people I just I I, I don't know like I just I I used to like it because it was one of the original channels of the mob it was a yeah, you know he started it out I know that he did what it's, it's whatever Chris listen I came at you because of a comment you made earlier up there I apologize if I came at you but you did like you know make a comment that wasn't the nicest comment before so whatever like this shit's fucking worse than goddamn like fucking junior high study hall with this shit already holy fuck but that's it man that, that that's all it is i mean it, let's just just squash it we'll just squash it and move, move on well see jimmy yeah. you're saying it just broke yesterday no jimmy just be just because that guy said it yesterday this shit's already been out there with <laughs> other people and other people down there that knew this is what I mean. You got this is old fucking news, you know, Christ. But whatever it is, what it is. Mark, uh, Mark, say your piece. Yo, what's up, man? No, what's, what's up? up? What's, what's happening? No, no, no. I, uh, I just wanted to ask you something, man. Without you wigging out and shit, you know. I just, I just want you to understand that what I'm saying is, it, it's just a huge hypocrisy, bro. To um. It has nothing to do with you. I think you're all right, right? Um, you're an ex-prison guard, whatever it is you, that you do, that's fine. You're a man. You got to make a living. I got no yeah. problem with you. I don't even know you, bro, but you're tripping out and wigging on something. This guy that you, you basically co-host with, right? This guy, he's a civilian, bro, and he's on a, his channel screaming, fuck rat, rat this, rat that. Listen, bro, I've done a lot of time. I've been in, in and out of the uh, state system since I'm a little kid, bro. I was in juvenile hall. I've done a lot of fucking time in California, okay? I got no problems with you being a prison guard, but this guy's on here screaming, fuck rats, fuck this. Fuck. This guy has paperwork on him. He told on people, bro. I know you, you're saying you didn't see it, but it's out there. It's all over YouTube. There's a specific channel that's specifically, hold on, I'm not done, bro. I'll let you talk after. Not only that, not only did he tell, okay, he told on somebody. Not only that, he's got you, bro. If he fucking hates rats so much and he and, and Jeff Loma is really, really living that life, bro. Joey Merlino's his fucking boy. What is he doing with having having a, an ex-prison guard on his channel? Nothing against you at all. But do you understand where I'm coming from, bro? A guy that's really yeah. living that life would, would never have a fucking prison guard as a co-host screaming, rat this, rat that. It doesn't work that way, buddy. I'm just trying yeah, to yeah, kick, kick a little really knowledge to you. I'm just trying to I kick a little knowledge to you and maybe possibly open your eyes as to what, in my opinion, Jeff's a, uh, Jeff does a good job at what he does. He needs to just knock all the, uh, you know, the rap, the street guy shit. He's got to stop that. And if he's really about that, he's got to fix some things because he's got some super questionable shit going on around him. Nothing yeah, against you. There is nothing wrong at all with you that you used to be a prison guard. You're nah, a man, that's a job, bro. Listen, You're not a gangster. This, this it's whole okay. Thing. Neither is Jeff, though. Like, he's not well, he a gangster. Thinks, yeah, either. neither is Jeff. He acts like one. He, he puts up post, fuck with me, blah, blah, blah. I know this guy. I'm the rat, 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 when he so did the same thing. Do you have to be a mobster to, to, to say you don't like rats? Do you have to be a mobster to, like, go after rats? You don't have to be a mobster to do that. No, but do you see the hypocrisy he when, he fucking, when, when he's told? He's told on he's, he's been a rat, bro. I mean, I, I mean, listen, I can't, I'm not answering everything for all I, I can't. I've explained what he how, when that came out and it wasn't just yesterday. This came out well before that. 
he explained it. Okay, he and again, I mean, it's well, he explained it. He explained it, and then the facts were put out, right? Um, I'm just all I'm saying, bro. Like, the the facts were put out. Like I said, this story that they're talking about, the facts were put out from years back. The the facts were no, no. What you were saying is he explained it. He explained it. Yes, he he explained his version of it, and then there's the facts. Whenever they were put out, and they were just put out again recently, and the guy was living with John A. Light, bro. And now you're listen. People have a change of heart. People, people, people have changes of heart, bro. I understand how somebody could be like him, but listen, this guy has absolutely no reason for to to be living with a light and telling on people and having you as a co-host and then coming out saying, "Hey, fuck rats!" Like, bro, you have no fucking leg to stand on, Chris. I believe, and you can have your own opinion. My opinion is. Jeff is a confused person and he's trying to fit in into different places. And when it doesn't work in one section, it didn't work with a light. And those guys, he tries going somewhere else to fit in there. Now he's getting the boot again because he fucking lies. Listen, Chris, when you lie, bro, you always have something that's, that's going to, uh, it, it's going to backfire on you at some point is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And I, I'm not, I don't think you're a bad dude again. I just had, that's all I had to say. Listen, you got to understand when you're fucking lying, bro. And these are big, listen, he's playing with some serious shit, dude. He's playing with fucking the federal government and with real fucking gangsters. When you start lying like that, bro, you got a world of shit that's going to unfold. When it unfolds, it's bad, dude. You understand? Like, listen, bro, I've been there, done that with this kind of shit. You cannot lie. It's going to in life in general. It's going to catch up with you sooner or later. Now, uh, listen, if the guy was was cool with him and he was helping him out, that's cool, man. But the guy obviously told you he didn't really know you like like you kind of claimed. So what? Big deal. But the guy doesn't want to be your friend. Fuck it. Let it go, dude. Who gives yeah, a fuck? Move on. He's not man. Joey Merlino's nobody, bro. He's just another fucking gangster, a regular fucking guy, dude. He's a regular that's guy. He's a stand up guy. Who cares if you don't want to be your friend, man? Move the fuck on. That's again, like he, he, Jeff never made it claim that he, yes, he was did. close friends with the guy. Like cl- recently, okay. they, about re- recently, because the guy's been asking him to provide. Oh, no, he said it. I, I heard him talk about Joey. He goes, yes, he, right. he, he, so alludes, he, alludes, he alludes that he was close to him, bro. And other, and other gangsters as well. He alludes to it all the time without yes, saying sir, it. You know? so one, sir, question, one question, yeah. Nick, Chris, do you realize no one here okay. now in the chat, maybe they started to, but people are respecting you. You're on. You're, you listen, there's nothing wrong no, with you. I being, understand. You, you listen, listen. Let me finish. There's nothing wrong at all with what you did whatsoever. I'm just trying to understand, like, you're getting aggravated over what someone else is doing. So I like, it's not like, being, I, th- well, it's his friend, Lou. A redundancy. It's such a redundancy. Listen, no, it's I'm not. not bro. These, are, these are facts. And I'm telling you why, because so, the guy, it's better than just but check it out. But check it out. Chris, Chris, Mark, Chris, listen to me, bro. Well, hold on. You've been talking for a little bit. Right, I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. What I mean by redundancy isn't just the fact that shit has been out there for years now. You came on here saying the exact same shit Loomis just said two or three times. That I mean, I don't know what else to say it is. I mean, okay. you're basically saying the same stuff he did. No. Hold on. He lived. Listen, he he said what he said. I told you the answer that he gave. He gave here. He gave other places. The A-Light stuff. See, so this isn't me being an apologist or anything for him. He lived, you know how long he lived? He lived with a light less than a year, a, a week, a week. Doesn't matter. They could live with it for hey, two that's, that's hours. Fine. It's just the that's point, fine. bro. That's fine. That's like, that's like selling up with the fucking rat, bro. It's like being in the same cell. No, the only reason that this shit is all came out again, Chris, is because Joey just fucking dropped what everybody already knew. That, hey, I don't really know the guy. That's why it's being talked about. Listen, I, I, I totally get that. And that's, that's what I said. But he lived it, the eight light shit. He was with him less than a week. He didn't know from what he said. He that's like that's like saying you're part. You're half pregnant, bro. It doesn't matter. Listen, and I don't even care about none of that shit. I really don't. But I just wanted to make up, it. I'm just trying to respond to you, man. Like no, 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 no. Well, there really is no response, Chris. I mean, yes, you know, it is what it is. There's facts. There's facts, and that's that. You're not. But there's two sides to it, and you're not allowing me to say I don't give a fuck. I'm trying to say, Chris, I'm trying Chris, to say something. Ahead. I get one, two. Go ahead, two no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Listen, not by me. I let you speak. Not, you know. Yes, it. you did. Yes, you did. Go yeah, ahead. Mark, I, I respect. I am. I, Lewis, I thank you for that. So again, and I respect you coming on here. 
that I appreciate that. He lived with a light less than a week. It was when he was getting started. Someone put him up to the you're not let him finish, Mark. Mark, you Jesus have to let him finish. Christ, man. I, I, dude, I I'm can't not talking, bro. What are you talking about? Right. My dog barked, dude. Listen. I ain't fucking talking. I'm letting this guy speak, man. Okay, there you go, Chris. I thought I'm sorry, Mark. I apologize. It was his he dog. Listen, barking. listen. He lived with the guy for less than a week, found out what he was all about, and he bounced. That's basically what he said. And here's the key point. Here, now listen, this is the 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 you yeah. want to talk about a hypocrisy? And I, I know you can say it doesn't matter if you live doing them a week, a year, whatever. That's fine. Do you know that do you know how those people down there all knew about this? He talked to him about it. He explained the situation. Okay, they knew about it. They knew it with listen, guys higher up on the totem pole knew about everything about his situation with A Light. He went over it with them, they questioned him. How do you know? Problem. Were you there? I was in clubs. I was in clubs. Listen, Chris is telling you. Listen, this stuff was out there. Right. This stuff with a light because of all the haters lumping in. This shit has. It's no one paid not, it's, it's impossible not to not know when you a million and one people from 10 years back, five years back, have put it out a million times. There's fucking links to it, showing it. They yeah. all knew he had to explain himself. He explained <laughs> the situation, okay? And then, and it was all fine. They didn't have an issue with it. He re-explained it to them, okay? And it was all fine. The only reason it's being an issue now is because now that's what they're going to use because he stood his ground against that guy, the guy didn't like it, so now that's what they're using. So yeah, that, they know knew I about it. Chris, the shit. I, I can sit here right now as I'm talking to you. Type in links from ten years ago, five years ago. This stuff comes up, but I, I, yeah. I, I I'm done with it. It is. What but, uh, yeah, I that's fine. What I want to say, you know, Marky Mark, yeah. real quick. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The way that guy's living and acting is like he's following the rules of Costa Nostra. It doesn't matter exactly. if he's been there for 10 minutes or freaking an hour or 10 years. And then he goes and becomes friends with the Gaudis and then smashes a light all the time. And um, th th yes, you did. really believe he left after he found out what a light was about? Who didn't know what a light was about? That's what made him move. Listen, <laughs> That's well, this, was, this is one of the shit, bro, Loomis, we're going back 10 years ago, but like you ask me, see, you guys say I'm his apologist, whatever, defending the guy too much, I can actually, look at the one You're comment, friend, one yeah, of this shows, or whoever the fuck the guy is, Loman never admitted that, yes, he did admit that, he's admitted it, okay, he's, you don't listen to him enough, I don't know. He's admitted it. Okay. I'm not sitting here saying this to defend the guy. I've seen it here. We've seen it with my own yeah, eyes. You are. He admitted it. Christ. But no, you are. And listen, just, just so you just so you know, Chris, like I'll, I'll just get from my from my point of view, or from a guy that's been in the street, you know, no no street guy gives a fuck about, you know, what Jeff's Jeff is so I, what I'm trying to understand is 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 Jeff a, a journalist, a content creator, or is he uh, he wants to be a gangster. That's, that's the problem here, man. This guy's like straddling a fence. Uh, it's like, you got to be what you are, man. You're not a fucking street dude. You're never going to be a street dude. Your paperwork's fucked that's up true. bad. You know, you've done a lot of things, man, that, that you can't do. And, you know, he just, in my opinion, Chris, and I don't got nothing else to say, bro, because this is going in circles. You know what I mean? First thing is, the only reason any of it's even being brought up, dude, is because the guy alluded for the last year or so that, you know, he knows this guy. And he was cool. When in reality, he helped him with some paperwork. But Joey's got fucking lawyers, bro. It's very expensive lawyers to, to work for him. You know what I mean? That's how they met each other. And I believe that's how, because that's what Joey said. Hey, by the way, did you see uh, the, that Patreon show that they did, Joey and, and his partner? Yeah. Yeah, we did. I didn't. I didn't get to see it, so I was just wondering. But okay, so I'm sure he he said how he felt on that show. Um, but one way or the other, I really don't care. And they, like I said, the only reason I believe that any of this shit's being talked about is because of because of what Joey, you know, said. Joey said what he said because Loman was alluding that they were close, and you know that's that. As far as everything else, uh, Chris, I think you're an all right guy. I don't give a fuck about what Jeff Loman does. Um, and one more thing, I think he should just stick to stick to his his content and do that. Stop fucking straddling the line like you're a street guy. Just do your fucking thing and and and, and stop calling people rats because you're one yourself. You know, and that's all I got to say, bro. Chris, it was nice meeting you, bro. 
It was nice right. meeting you, bro. I got nothing against you at all. Take it easy, and uh, I'll see you later, Loomis. All, all right. right, you thank you, Marky. So yeah, Chris, see, no, you're right. You're listen. You're like you look stressed, and nobody is talking bad about you. No, it's does. not. It's not that. It's just like these guys say. I, I love it. The end. Oh, I really don't care about the guy. I really don't care what he does. But then everybody, you know, obviously you do. You came on to talk about it. And, and listen, I respect Mark. You Mark for coming on saying his piece. I don't have an issue with the guy. But you know, holy fuck, the whole thing. Listen, the guy went when he started his show. It's not the only trial he went to. He, it, 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 part of what he does, he's good. He, he is good at what he does with research and shit. Part of what he does, he went to the guy's trial. When he was at that guy's trial prior to that, he did a show, a little bit of a show on Philly. Someone at the trial, not going to mention names, but you know, someone pretty higher up approached Jeff. Listen, you don't know me. Don't say this shit about me until you know me. Now, and of course, people will say this is a lie, like just like they said that he never knew Joey. You don't know me. Don't write this shit about me till you get to know me. You know, then if you still have that opinion about me, that at least you'll know me. Okay, that was the gist of it. From there, him and that guy built a little bit of a relationship. The guy told him come down to Philly. He went down to Philly, pointed him in the right direction, some places to go. That's how it all started. It wasn't like they just said, "Oh yeah, come on in, man." We. It wasn't like that. Okay, he just he he covered a guy's trial. Someone approached him about something. He said. You know, they went back and forth. They, stood, they both stood their ground. The guy said, you want to write about me? You think you know me? Don't write that shit about me until you get to know me. Started a relationship with the guy. Went down to Philly. Told him to come down to Philly. Went down there. And just a relationship slowly built up. That's all it was. Never said he was a gangster. Never said any of that. Okay. That's all it was. All he, he did. He does have a couple close friends down there that were higher up. Okay. Not Joey. Other guys. He does. He did. Okay, I know he does because I've seen it, okay, with my own eyes. It's that simple. Never said he knew Joey, like, best friends with him and all that shit. You know, all he did is he, you know, he, he wanted to cover this guy, Anthony Persiano, who's a piece of fucking shit who ripped people off. Doesn't even, the feds don't even make him pay his fucking restitution, which is horrible. So Jeff been burying that guy for a long time, that Persiano. Joey's been contacting him for the paperwork about Persiano. He gave him the fucking paperwork. You know, it wasn't just a one thing, oh, like one phone call, one email. It was back and forth, a lot of work he put into it. Then he goes on his show, doesn't give him credit, but gives another guy credit. That's all it was. That's all it was. It's that simple. And then also, listen, like I said, we started this because we were not, had nothing to do with yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Obviously. And, 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 of course. But, of course, you're, all your chat that says they don't give a fuck, all they want to do is ask questions about it. Holy fuck. Well, no, man. They want to. They want to know why this guy though constantly is calling people rats when he's one himself. That's all. I've explained it, man. I don't. Know. I know. I, well, why is it bothering you so much? I never. No not not you, Chris. I mean, people saying, are actually. People are listen, actually having respect. People, people respect you. Like, you're not. You're lying. asking you're me why I fucking go through like get at. Look at what you're. But I know who this great guy is because he's the one up Moore's that night. Looking through people's paperwork isn't that illegal as a seal? I wasn't looking through. I wasn't looking through fucking anybody's paperwork. I stayed at that, looking at asking that Frankie guy about something about a mob guy from fucking something that happened in the 1950s. Isn't looking at people's. Where the fuck did I say I was looking at paperwork? Well, you let me ask you this. Tragedy. You know that I'm close with the oh, Buffalitos. You know that I'm doing a project on them, and that, you have my number. And you, you know, why not me? And we live like. Literally no, I'm good. just responding. Look at 108 AM where your buddy Greg says, looking through people's paperwork, isn't that illegal as a CO? Where did I say current paperwork? I don't look at current paperwork. I don't I have nothing to do with that shit. But you're saying this is what you wonder why I get agitated. Look at how dumb that comment is. Holy fuck. <laughs> that's so stupid, man. Like that, that's the dumbest fucking I, I Greg. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a good guy. Where did you hear me say I am looking through people's paperwork currently? I said Jeff does. That's what he does on his show. He just heard you. Oh he, look, he even said my he, he said my bad. He said my bad, but sounds oh, like you were just fuck. explaining yourself too much as and as far as paper. No, he was, they just, this is he was wondering if it was illegal. He'd said my bad, dude. Look at he's saying my bad. 
like he, he admits is wrong. And a lot of people, I'm just saying, no, real quick, just 30, ask it more, more, ask you better it, subscribe up. Ask them where, on a level of one to 10, how corny. I met the guy in person twice. He's just a regular guy. He's not corny. He wasn't playing some tough guy act or gangster act like people say. He's just a fucking regular guy. You go out, you have a couple of drinks, out to dinner, whatever. He's just a regular fucking guy. That's all it was. People are making way too much. No, but you know what I always say, though, Chris? Like, because a lot of people, I'm not even talking about him now. A lot of people, though, like, they'll start, that I'm talking in general, they'll start, like, these shows, and then they all of a sudden start thinking, like, they're a fucking gangster, and it's laughable. Like, you know what I mean? And I think he has a little bit of that going on. Let's be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he'll he'll act. Yeah, I'll, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Maybe he gets carried away sometimes, but holy fuck. Well, like I said, I can't tell you how many times on his show he says, I'm not a gangster. I'm not a mobster. I never claimed I was. But, you know, that's people will still say that. It is what it is. No. And listen, there's nothing wrong man, with what you did to so stop. Like, if this isn't coming towards you, it's just no, that the guy, I, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow, and everything's going to come back to you. I get it, man. I I, I get it. It, it, it. It's just like when people say shit that is just categorically not even true. It's like, what the fuck, man? Oh, my God. You know, holy Christ. You ever know somebody, like, you know, you're somewhat close to someone, and you know the truth about a situation, and then all these other people from the outside are saying something that's really not even close to the truth. You know, you're like, what the fuck, man? Well, that's what, like what, the, that's what I was saying earlier, though. You have like fanboys that are like, if you say something and you show them the facts, they still can't accept that they were wrong, and they still have to be like, no, or like Michael Francis never cooperated because no one went to prison. That's the funniest yeah. thing in the world. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm talking about the chat, like the yeah. But yeah. Yeah, some of these, not I'm not our chat. I love everyone in my chat. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that the fanboys of this genre. They shouldn't be yell. I just I'm sick of the whole rat 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 shit when they didn't even have a parking ticket in their life, and this guy actually cooperated, and yeah. that's that. We'll just end it oh, that. And you and Frankie can settle this. Me, you and Frankie can settle this behind the scenes. I have respect for you. You know, Greg. Sorry for going off. It's good. If you misunderstood, you misunderstood. No, 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 no. But no, it no, Greg. Your comment looked a little like you know off. But it's he was just wondering if it was illegal or whatever. But then he he apologized. Greg could admit. No, I, and I said it's all accepted. It's all good. It's but it's just uh move on, man. It, it it's fucking nuts, but. It is no, hey man, hey man, no. We went over this though a bunch, and like you said, it keeps going in circles. I have respect for the fact though, that you came on here, and I, uh, I really do, and I think so does the chat. And I just think you're great. You're a real good dude, and you're just loyal though to the wrong one. That's all. Well, I, I, I appreciate it, man. I mean, yeah, you're gonna defend your friends a little bit, but you know, it, it's not. In, but like I said, it's not even so much this defending him. It's just knowing. It's just knowing the truth when people over embellish. That's all it is. But you look at this. This yeah, guy working at the toughest job in America. It's, it's, I'll give him that. that that's another guy that goes after Jeff nonstop. But it, it is what it is. But oh, I thought he was actually giving you a compliment. Sorry. No, he <laughs> was. He was. But I, I, I just recognize the name. He's always just. Uh, What's up, my name. man? I'll subscribe to your channel. So give me a subscribe. Yeah. I like seeing new content that's creators come in. Is, Chris. I mean, Greg, I don't do you know. Realize, man, when you when we first met, though, and then I had you come into my parents' house, like, and then we went to, out to uh, Massachusetts and all that. In my mind, I was, I was like, dude, this guy's awesome. He knows his shit. Like, you know, like I want even with the project I'm doing, I was like, you know, will I wanted you like to help though with it and stuff like that. But I just keep getting you know, these weird, weird calls from people saying this happened, that yeah, happened, no, and understand. it's just you know but it can't be let it go at times. this point. Every every time I think this shit's squashed with us, like it, it just seems like something comes back up. Yeah, you know, it's like you think it's good, then a week later, two weeks later, something seems to like you know happen again. Okay, yeah, listen, we can like bury I said, that. did I we did I that. fucking badmouth you to Frankie? Absolutely, because I knew from the text, I knew you like you know were bad mouthing me a little bit. You're a fireball. Someone takes a shot at you, or you take a shot back. That's what men do. They defend themselves. We squash it. It's over and done with. Let's just let it go. And but Marky Mark even said to you too, like you know, you're his friend. So that is that I, I you know, if he's your friend and you got his back like that. 
then you're a real friend to him. And that's that. Marky Mark says one more thing. Gorky, if Loma was your friend, he'd be here with you, bro. He probably doesn't even know this is going on. What were you don't even see him in a lot of chat? I mean, you see him going angels once in a while. I didn't even talk to the guy today. I is mean, he like, I, is I, he I, control, yeah, but is he he's controlled though a little bit by them? Is that why he like you know he says the the Travolta Gotti movie was better than Goodfellas? He knows it's not. I don't know where he said that, man. I he said that Gotti movie sucked. He, I know, know, but he, he saw it. He can't do it. He knows he said it. Me and him laughed about it. I go, Jeff, what are you doing here? And I, uh, cause we used to message back and forth before I even had this channel. And yeah. um, he's like, and he just sent back like an LOL. So, I mean, he, you know, he's like, like Lee was being controlled by other people. Like just, you know, I don't think he's controlled. I, he's not controlled. I just think if he's on good terms, like, you know, he he's always been close, even though they had a little fights off and on. He's always been close with Angel. So, you know, maybe he just said that shit out of respect. There's probably something, but trust me. Listen, that guy's a tough fucking movie critic. That's another thing that's so fucking stupid. Like, he made Elvis impersonations. He put blood, you know, that whole blood on his face shit. He wasn't being real, but he was, t even though it looked stupid, he, he was, I mean, you probably know he's, he was doing that show, The Flanagans, that shit got fucked up for legal reasons to be honest with you no, making a project like that is so hard that's why like with the bulger one it's very well, hard what, what i'm saying is like the whole fake blood that like people would show he was testing that out for his flanagan show he was doing the guy made an elvis a big fucking deal you know what I mean? You think if he wanted it out there, he wouldn't have took it down. He's the, he's the only guy that made an Elvis impersonation. It's not a big fucking deal. People have hobbies. People like different things. He what? likes to I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even. Elvis. Oh, he did. He did. Because I guess he liked Elvis. And way back whenever, he put on an Elvis wig and did an Elvis impersonation. So people think that somehow, like, discredits him or something. Big fun. Like, it's just. It, it, that's how petty the shit is. It's fucking ridiculous. No, buddy, but, but the whole thing, though, is, oh, man, I just, you know, I, I really, truly do think that you're a solid person, and I just, uh, you know, you, you live very close to me, though. I just think that you should be yeah. on a team, though, that actually is legit and doesn't make shit up for fucking whatever, and then I'm, like, that's like me fucking now. I was an addict, a drug addict, and that's like me having a show bashing addicts. Like, it doesn't make I, sense. I, I, I understand. And here's another thing with the whole, why does Jeff... I mean, this is another thing that's so funny. Why why does he living in Virginia Beach somehow discredit everything? Like, that's just another fucked up thing. The whole Providence thing. He does have roots there. He did live there, but it was when he was very, from what he said, he was very, very young. And he moved away at a young age, okay? He has people... In his family, his father was in the Navy. And, like, I'm sure as people understand, when your parents are in, you have a family member in the military, your parents, you could be living and you have to go where they're stationed. So his father got stationed in Virginia Beach. As far as the Providence thing, he didn't, he, like, he was just there very, very young as, as a child, five, six, seven years old, whatever. And that's when he moved away. Okay. And then I, I believe his parents split up at one point and that's how he, you know how it is when you're, I'm not saying you and I just saying in general, like your parents split up, maybe one summer you live here with your father and other summer you're with your mother. It's ridiculous. Then the whole, he's not Italian thing because do people, do you guys all, like all these people uh, that, now I want to say he's not Italian because his last name's Loman. He was adopted. Loman is his adopted name. His well, there's a big thing about being Italian. I'm Irish. I'm proud of my heritage. Be no, proud of I'm just saying because that's what the guy said on his show. He's not even fucking Italian. And he is Loman is his adopted name. His father was Italian. Okay. He's half Irish, half Italian. That's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, well, that's yeah. I mean, whatever. But no, there are. I'm not talking about Jeff now. But there are people. Like you ever see those things? Like you, like these memes. You just wish you were Italian. No, I don't. Like I'm happy. But like you should love your name. You should be like Marky said. Be proud of your name, and go on. I, no, I, I, listen. I'm a fucking mutt, and I don't like. I don't care. I'm Irish, yeah. Polish, Welsh. I, I don't have an ounce of Italian in me. I don't give a fuck. 
Well, you should know, though, man, for, I'm just being honest, the people acting that way. I mean, even guys like us, though, are probably, like, no offense to Jeff, though, but I probably did more stuff than him, and I don't talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. Well, Mark, not- the reason I'm bringing the Italian stuff up was because on the other guy's show, when he was ripping into Jeff, okay, the, the Patreon show, you know, he said he's not even Italian. He, he He's half Italian. Loman was his adopted name. His real father was Italian. Okay. It's, it is what it is. Truthfully, I don't even care about all this shit though. With all that stuff. I was just, you know, more on the subject of what was going on. I understand. And it went there and I'm part responsible for it going there, which I said, I don't know. No, I understand no man. And listen, listen, I I don't see anyone disrespecting you, man. I just think that uh, the facts are out there. There's no, there's, there's nothing to defend. I mean, facts what is something funny about that ancestry thing? So you know how you do ancestry DNA and shit. So yeah. like, you ever do that shit? That shit fucking breaks you down to like shit you never heard of. You could be like point, like two percent Jewish and, and have no Jewish roots at all. I mean, it breaks you. So another thing that was funny, I have not Jeff. I I think it was someone else. They take your saliva, you send it away. That's how they, you get your DNA. Somebody used the saliva of a frog and sent it away, and they replied as to like breaking them down like he was a human, <laughs> where the frog's ancestors came from. Yeah, that's from. a bunch of BS. <laughs> but and something I say, and people might know this. I'm just switching gears a little bit. Another thing I found interesting. So I, I went to Ellis Island once, and they had this thing called on the computer Liberty Ellis Foundation. It's where my great grandparents came in. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I mean, most of ours did. Anyways, so, uh, um, and, and I might be telling people what they are, you know. So you could look it up at home. Do you know if you know the correct spelling of your ancestors that came over on the boat? You could find them on the ship's manifest. Well, you yeah, go- see, for example, Darty, D-O-U-G-H-E-R-T-Y. But when Mayan came over on the boat, it was D-O-H-E-R-T-Y. Yeah, they also well, changed, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying, correct spelling. But if you know their name and their first name, you could go right now. They It's called Liberty Ellis Foundation, and there's a passenger search. They have all the ships manifest. It tells you where your, 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 rel- your ancestors' name, what country they came from, what year they came over. Um, what boat they came on. I just found it kind of interesting. That's all. This is going to yeah, buddy. And I don't think, man, that the chat is so much attacking you. They're more like, you know, it sounds like this guy was also lied to by him. He is just repeating story, stories he has told him, but he doesn't actually know. Well, he's his friend. I don't like, I don't know what the lies. I understand the whole ratchet and all that. But other than that, like, it's like I said, yeah, from day one, that's where, where he like, don't makes his whole thing from though. Like, you know, I thought this was like anti rat, this and that. He, he doesn't like rats. Makes you think now, and everyone who yells rat, you got to think that they rat. It's almost like if you have, if you have a girlfriend and she keeps asking you, Chris, are you cheating? Are you cheating? Are you cheating? Guilty conscience, you know? Listen, yes, that's, not, that's not that's not the what I came on here for. I came uh, on here to just talk about our situation and um well listen, just squash it, man. It's done. By the way, something look at the numbers of people though, dude, though, that are that are understanding this. I understand, dude, that you're thinking there's trolls out there and all that, but I mean I just think you could do better, man. That's all I'm being honest. Oh, that's pretty cool, Roro. I'm reading her comment about her grandparents. Uh, Roro's the best, yes, yeah. she's it's the cattle out of Sicily, hundreds of years. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Carry yeah. Ireland right here, though, too. And yeah, I have a little, my dad's 50%, what do you call it, Irish, 50% Lithuanian. And I'm, and my mom's 100% Irish. So I'm There's not 100% Irish. Like, like, There's like a lot of Lithuanian. I don't care. I'm not going to lie, though, and just be like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, what, you know, I don't know. I just think it's weird, but that's not what I came on here for. No, it's, here. it's good. I, I'm going to roll, like, you know, if I got a little carry away, wasn't getting that. It, it just, just, just know the truth that agitates me. Like, that's was the agitate, the, the, the over embellishment, all that. You know, people will take this video, run with it, make a big deal about it. But am I, is it, am I going to get a strike? No, am I going to get a no, strike? No, 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 no. Cease and exist. No, he, no. I mean, it, it, if someone uses your, someone else uses your content, though. Yeah. I mean, and then that's yeah. you know, fuck. Whoa, up. That's but, uh, you know, um, there's something else I was gonna tell say to you, but I don't even fucking remember at this point. But it is what it is. Oh well, yeah, guess- but like the whole thing, like I said, from day one before you ever knew this guy, 
and you hear like I mean, picture Lane, picture you get done with this. Somebody's doing some mob show. You've never heard this guy in your life before. You don't have a show. Somebody's screaming your fucking name over the phone, saying, saying a person, you're not real. Your name's not Loomis. Someone else is using your name to make fake profiles. Right out of the gate, you know, I saw the lies that his haters portrayed. That's all it was. That, that's all it was. And then I continue to see the lies. He didn't know the guy. He doesn't know anybody down there. Well, I mean, obviously, we know that wasn't true, even though, we, you know, I, whatever. He knows him from his show, though. It wasn't like he grew up with them. Come on. From who? No, I don't know. Whoever he knows. Like, yeah, are you telling me he's like longtime friends with these guys, like just because, or or was he friends because of his show? I I, I explained it. He was he he when he I started. Mean, his, no, I know, I know. When he, I'll I'll I say it again. Not him anymore about, about when, when about yeah, that. I know it's getting stupid. When he started his show way back ten years ago, whatever the fuck it was. Okay, he went and covered. He was covering Philadelphia. He went to Joey Merlino's trial. He went after that rat, J.R. He, he did go to bat for you guys a lot. He covered the trial. At his trial, somebody there higher up came and approached him. Hey, listen, you think you know me? You want to say this and that? You don't know me. Get to know me a little bit. Then if you have that opinion, you can say something about me. From that, he was kind of like pointed, you know, like, I guess invited to Philly, told to go to so-and-so, you know, um, tell him I sent you, blah, blah, blah. And through that relationship slowly developed. That's how he got to know the people. And then when he got close with these people, and I'm not saying Jody by close, I'm saying other people that were kind of higher up. When he got close with those people, he just defended them. Because just as you say, friends defend each other. Well, he was friends with some of those guys down there. Not Joe, like, but well, even Marky Mark, Mark even said when I asked you, I said, "Why though do you keep like defending?" Marky Mark said, "Because because Marky like he tells it like it is." He said, "Because Chris is his friend, and you are though doing though what a friend is supposed to do." I just don't, it's, you know, yeah, it's just a lot, like the, the exaggerations and the lies, like like I and, and this isn't any anything disrespect towards you, Lewis, but like I explained the situation. You just asked me, well, how did you get to know these guys? You didn't know them. Like, I, I explained that earlier. I, you know, you forgot it, whatever. No, 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 no. I didn't about. know if he knew people like me and, like, growing up. That's what I was asking. That's all. And who cares? It's No, as far as, like, I got sucked into talking about this topic, though, because, yeah, it, you know, it, it, as, far, as far as the Philly guys, no. He was, like I said, he just covered their trial. You know, somebody approached them. They developed a relationship. You, well, you, know, who ca- you know what? You know what? You know what, Chris? Who cares? It is. Yeah, it's done, man. It's stupid. Already. You know, it's no, stupid. I'm saying, though, who cares, though, if he does? I just think, though, that what's aggravating people is the whole rat, like anti rat yeah. thing from him when he was one. That's all. Well, like I said, it, it's, I explained what he said as well. You know what I mean? I think but, the chat's respecting you. I freaking respect yeah, you. I, I don't, don't, you came on. You know, listen, man, a lot of people, man, you guys, not were, come on. you guys were. You, I'm fair, man. Like I'm, I really yeah, I am. And yeah. I had you come on, and I think that uh, you're. I just think I think you're a great dude. I have no issues though with you. I would just though, just you know, just look into who you're defending more, man. That's all. Yeah, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm the well, over I'm here about, I, I know we only have almost five thousand, but you know, <laughs> get over here. What's that? You're a smart, intelligent guy. I said, come over to the A team over here with us. I know that we're, you know, no, we're not I, as I big as a channel. About 5,000 over there. All right. Um, no, but I no, appreciate I said 5,000 subscribers. That's all. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. But no, I appreciate you dropping the link. We handled it. You know, it is it is what it is. Just squash it. And, you know, the chat was respectful to me. I just, I knew the shit with Jeff would come up and whatever it is, what it is. But I'm going to balance. I, I, you know, you want to give me a call after this or tomorrow, I'll be around. I'll call you definitely tomorrow just because it's already going for like 1.30. Yeah, I'm it's not. fucking late. I, but all right, guys. I, see you later. Nobody, I, listen, Chris, real quick, though, just I just want you to know this because I do care like about like people who are legit and cool. Like nobody is like harping on you. So just don't no, think I, I, maybe I, they did in the beginning because no, of the I, I, I stuff, but, it's, it's fine. But I, they're I, not I, harping I, on you. And anymore, if there's any issue with me and you want to talk to me, t- Call me and talk to I, me. I, I, I will. I and like I said, I know I know how I'm much happy. It, I, did I tell you I about had an issue with you when I called Frankie. I was just interested in what he said about Russ. That's all. But and it's all good. 
Listen, the others, that's not the information I got back. That's all. It's it's like I said, let's just squash it at this point. It's it's all good. We'll just just move on. But I'm gonna roll uh good night, chat. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you but, for coming uh, on, and I respect you for coming on, and we and will talk tomorrow. I respect you for giving me the chance to come on and say my piece. Ha- have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, guys. So that was Chris. And, hey, I'm not here to try to just, you know, defend him or whatever, but let's be honest. A lot of people, though, won't come on here, and uh, he did. And um, especially, you know, with – his face showing and everything explaining though the whole situation in my opinion i don't I even want to go to that area because we had our own personal beef that we squashing right now but my point though is obviously from what's going on everyone else is going to bring it up though and you can't i was an addict so i can't start a show and make fun of addicts like you know so it's just it's weird but um it is what it is you got to remember too christo isn't a gangster you know so he's a citizen so you know, he could, if he wants to talk to him, he could talk to him. Like that's, that's, that's that. And he never tries to act like a gangster, meaning Chris, but um, yeah. I know we just kept going in circles on that. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, Chris, again, you should be a sportscaster. You're missing your calling. Well, that's why I got so mad though. Cause I really, really liked this guy at first. And like when I was hanging out with him, I'm like, this guy's cool. You know what I mean? He's intelligent. You could just tell he speaks well and all that stuff. Do your own thing, Chris. I mean, I'm not telling you to do YouTube, whatever I, if you don't want to, but I'm saying though, man, I just think that you're wrong. You're hanging around with the wrong one, but that's my opinion. And you could go and you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You guys got anything else for me? Greg, now that is the truth. He did come on. That is respectful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Chris Gorky needs to get it. Get the fuck away from oh, man, man, for real, real. 100. Yeah, he did. He's, dude, Chris is a good guy. He's not a bad guy. You could literally listen. Let's just take it though from Chris's perspective. Mob Talk Radio, back in the day, I remember like, you know, I would listen to it all that. He's listening to it at all. And he's listening to it and he's not a gangster. So they got, he told you the story and all that stuff. And then he bet him and he's defending his friend. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Me personally, if I found out though, that info, I would just like want to try looking at it though, because I just think though, that that's, it's just shady though, type of behavior. And he left after 10 days with Johnny A light because he found out what Johnny A light was. I don't know. I can't swallow that, but who knows? Um, and also to um, like make to make of the, it just it, the, it, the, the the no offense, Chris, but the fanboy stuff is actually Joey. Though I mean, not Joey. Um, what's his name? Um, the host of that show, Jeff. Um, by being all mad and being like he didn't say my name, blah blah blah. Like with that video, like just move on, move on. You know, but it is what it is. And I, I just really do want to respect um, Chris for coming on. You got it on that. Wouldn't you right here to fuck with your boy if he was on a channel defending you? Well, if he doesn't know, you know, I'm riding with the homie if he riding for me all, all day. And Chris was riding for him. But, and I said, he's welcome on the phone, on the show, uh, Jeff. So. You got to remember too, Marky Mark, our channel's a small channel. So, you, you know what I mean? He probably does. If he knows, I don't know, but we don't have a big reach. And I wish we, you know what I mean? We try to get the truth out. So that's why subscribe people for real. Uh, and we also love to have you guys on the show. For example, tomorrow doing a show and I'm dropping the addiction show on Sunday, but Sunday night though, we're going to do the open door where anyone could come on. You just, I had Chris on, I had uh, Will on, I had Marky Mark on tonight. Ghost comes on a lot. You know, that's what we do. And when Mike gets back from vacation, we'll be rocking and rolling. And um, I love all he is. I want to thank uh, for the donations again, Joe Town Jack. You are the man, Marky Mark. Thank you, Roro. Love you. And um, said, never said my name. I've listened to her 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie never said my name. I've listened to her for 35 years. Yeah, but you know what, though? This episode, though, wasn't about going over to the to the beef, though, with the, with the Merlino situation. But um, 
what people aren't realizing is if you're going to act that way and act like a mobster, you need to know the rules and you need to uh, know that you don't cooperate in that life. You don't, you don't, you know, if you're involved with that, I'm saying. So people can be successful, man, without trying to, to act like something they're not. I just think just be yourself and, um, you know, you're not a gangster. Hey, Ghost, thank you so much, though, brother. And I definitely took that advice, though, from you tonight, Aunt Pete. And Ghost told me that before the show as well. Love you, brother. And thank you for coming on. And thank you for the text that you threw me, though. I really appreciate that. Um, well, it is hard truths and reviews. The truth part is their problem. Yeah, you know, guys, and that's what we do. And the reason why, though, you're not going to see certain people and certain guests come on this show is because they know that we're going to ask, like, the questions that they don't want to answer. And um, if they got nothing to hide, I don't understand why, but we just try to tell it like it is and try to be real and wholesome and not uh, say this to try to get more views and say that to get more views. I'm just talking in general now. I'm not talking about that other show. We're just speaking in general. Um, that's why when I come on here, I try to let everyone know. Like, well, when I first did, Ghost would know he remembers back in the day um up at the house when i i'm not gangster i don't try to act like one i'm just interested in history and i'm interested in true crime and mma and all that stuff listen the reason why we changed the name is because i just i had to get out of that like whole mob tube type like genre it was just weird and there's there's enough pie for everyone though to eat so it's like you know the whole bash and back and forth bs bullshit um is ridiculous this was going on behind the scenes with us and then it came to fruition note today on here after everything that's just been going on and um and you i i gotta say though i respect chris for coming on and for everything that he said and um well i just you know i wish he would understand though who he's talking to a little better but i just think that uh you know show me your circle i'll show you your future but it is what it is. Plus, Cristo doesn't care. He's got a real job and doing all of his stuff and then the YouTube stuff. So I just think that he's defending the wrong one. And that is what it is. Also, he is welcome on this show anytime, Jeff, if he wants to come on and uh, ever say uh, or ever talk his piece. Um, the door is open. If um, never mind, I'm not even going to say it. Ghost is gone. Congratulations, guys, and Lo congratulations, guys, Loomis and OG Mike, for reaching over 4,000 subs. So very well deserved. Thank you so much, Ro, and you were part of that, helping us. And same with OG Ruby. All of you are. Um, but the people who have been with me since day one, too, Marky Mark, Ghost, all he is, I freaking love you as to death, Greg. All he is, um, I love it. And it doesn't mean that you wanted to have been with me since day one. You probably just didn't find the channel because Ro, for example, you didn't find the channel till I was on Brett's channel. So, and uh, that Mike said it best. Mob tube reminds you of soap operas. My mother used to watch. And you know, what's weird, Mike, and I hope you're subscribed up my man. You know, what's weird is um, you're in that genre. Like it's about like respect, right? Being a man's man, supposedly, and like this and that, but it's, it is. It's a soap opera. I mean, it really is a soap opera. Thank you, Ghost, for real. I love you, my man. Ghost is the man. Thanks, you, brother. I just want to make sure I got to everyone before though heading out. I want to thank Marky Mark. Um, and oh, I already did, and all everyone who came on. And that's pretty much it, though, guys. You got to see though, you know, a little bit behind the scenes of what's been going on a little bit, though. But um, any more people know that I have a project going on, whatever, but I'm not putting nothing is going up on YouTube or any bullshit like that. You guys want to see anything, go on Instagram and and like and follow the Buffalino family uh, page. It's the official page um, with uh, Angela Buffalino. So and so's book there and calling my father adult of a man. Well, you've seen the letter from Frank. What did he say? Everything, Everything goes through Angelo. So he couldn't be too much of an adult. And the person who called him adult, I don't even think he knows what the word means. Reason why I just showed that, though, that has nothing to do with the documentary, though. That's me and Joe were just hanging out on a Sunday, and it's just a little phone thing. But um, I want to thank you all for uh, 
coming on tonight and hanging for as late as we did. Um, I want to thank Roro so much for that. Thank you, bro. That's that's why Frankie's been trying to get in touch with me and others been, and I haven't been answering at all. I have a lot going on just personally and family, so no one take it like I'm ignoring you or anything. I'm just dealing with so even OG Mike's like, I can't even believe, man, that you're still doing though the show, blah, blah, blah. But, th but then he understood this is my escape, and you guys, I really do appreciate it. And listen, I don't want to be negative. I don't want to hate on anyone. You know what I mean? Like, I, I try to find the peaceful route now instead of, like, 20 years ago, like, when I just like, ah, you don't know. That's why I let Chris speak his point. And um, if maybe you guys disagree, a lot of you seem to agree. I just think that Chris is, uh, I think he's a good guy. I really do. And um, that's it. And uh, he's there defending someone that should come on. And, um, and I agree, Marky, but uh, he... Like Chris said, uh, he probably didn't know. If you need that, thank you so much. I appreciate you, bro, more than you know. Thank you, Greg. Joe Town, damn, I forgot about the Lacosa Nostra tattoo and the John Gotti portrait tattoo. Like my only chance to ask his opinion. I have no idea what that means, but... Um, Loomis, I have to say, and I'm not bashing anyone, but when you get two different stories from two different people, that's suspect. Well, 100%. Ghost, thank you so much. Hey, guys, again, if you like, low, bro, if if you could read, I'll share that thing, guys. We're doing memberships now, and uh, it's uh, going to be a lot of, like, you know, good, solid uh, material that... Um, it's definitely though going to be though worth it and um show you a lot of like inside stuff and this and that if you would like though to join um you'll start seeing that and i don't want people to think oh now we can't watch this because we're not paying this or paying that we still do though like our normal shows and stuff but you know i could try to run this like a business but meet me and mike could try to do this or that but like we love you guys and we just uh we're real like every one of our subscribers is welcome on or whatever. I love meeting subscribers. So, you know, a couple came down. My buddy Dave from Maine, he came down. I gave him like the Irish mentor and stuff like that. So you guys have no idea how much I appreciate you. And thank you all for the donations again. And um, the next show is tomorrow night. Like I, I made it this and tonight just happened to be, um, it just happened because of a call that I got. So this wasn't even HTR. So the episode tomorrow night, it's just gonna, we're going to figure that out. Um, I'm sure I could get a guest though for it. Uh, and because it's like, but so we, so we, for example, we have people coming back on. Carmine wants to come back on and this and that though, but I want to wait for Mike with that and um, all stuff like that. So once Mike's back, we'll be rocking with the guest again. A huge one that I'm working on and uh, just it's uh got some good stuff coming but that'll be normally like free up on here so that's that's that um look at craig's like can i give you six dollars to become a person and uh, and no you you can't even pay me the money to be a member i can you have to pay it through youtube so but you don't have to give me six dollars man but i can't even make you a member though till the money though is actually in there smash the like button CJ Carmine, my man. Hope you're subscribed up. And let me tell you something, CJ. Oh, no, that's Carmine. There he is. Uh, that's what confused me, man. With the guys, this is Carmine who was on with Gucci. Um, like I was just saying, we're going to have you back on when Mike comes on. And I, yeah, I would suggest to go all the way back after this and watch it from the beginning. But um, guy, thank you, Carmine. And guys, there's, there's a guy right there who... I would even vouch for the stuff that's coming out of his mouth. You could just tell it's absolutely the truth. He lived right there at stores there. You guys heard him though talking and uh, he's a gentleman. So thank you again, Carmine. Um, thank you, Ghost. Marathon live tonight again. Look at the 200 bucks. La Senorita kept writing 200 bucks. That's all I understand. She's from Germany. Thanks. You. Thank you, Carmine. I didn't think about Lumen's tattoos at the oh that was it. Okay, I get it now. Guys, have a beautiful night. Tomorrow we'll be on at 9.05. Marky, thank you again. Coming in. Much love to the good people in the chat who sub. All right, y'all. Good night. Thanks, Mark. And with that, we are out.
And thank you all so much again. And please subscribe. Hit the and guys. If you didn't hit the like button, like a little handshake deal, we work hard on the show. Hit the like and sub and subscribe. It helped get us moving. And so we so the people that were really trying to get the truth out there could get exposed, and um, more people could understand that a lot of people are BSing. Um, I'll look at the rerun. Thank you, Carmine. All right, guys. I sometimes I hate leaving. I I know I love talking to you. You guys are the best. But um, with all that, we're gonna keep stopping the baloney, and um, that's about it. Thank you all again. I love you. I'm Loomis, and like and subscribe, and have a beautiful Friday night. Well, it's over. Have a beautiful weekend, and la di da da. Fucking subscribe. I love you. Jesus, shut up already. Jesus Christ. Thank <laughs> you.